the state title game, and tonight they take on Kirkwood. And hi again, everybody. Neil Harwell, along with Richard Baldinger. Nice to have you with us here on Late Night with Baldy. How you doing, man? Well, Game three on the day. Now it's time to put the kids away. We saw some speed. Now you got a heavyweight slug match going on right now. We've been waiting for this yeah, one all have. time. And believe me, Kirkwood's been waiting since last year. They're back again, so they will tell you what. Put the kids away. This is <laughs> going to be an ugly one real quick. All right, Baldy, here we go. Let's look at the quarterbacks because they're outstanding in this ball game. Couple of dual threat guys. How about Kirkwood's Jordan Bishop? This is about the only time you'll see him standing in one place. He is so elusive. I tell you, 26, 26 touchdowns on the year, four interceptions. This guy, a lot more play action, but what an athlete, a consummate dual threat. You think you got him contained, you better make sure you wrap up or else he's out the back door for big game. The offensive player of the year in his conference, and so is this guy. He's the offensive player in his conference. That's Stephen McBee of Fort Osage. Yeah, we saw him earlier in the year, and you saw what he can do with running the football. Last week, I saw him against Ozark, really improved in throwing the football, and that's one of the keys in talking with Coach Sharks. How does he do throwing the ball if he does look out for a a lot of fireworks from Porter Sage on offense. The nightcap here in St. Louis. Neither of these teams has ever won the state title. The Class 5 State Championship. You're watching the Show Me Bowl 2012 on Fox Sports Midwest. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burned. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a ham. Like, I don't really you, know. you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Show Me Bowl 2012 is brought to you by Farmers Insurance and by the Bomberito Automotive Group. There is head coach Matt Irvin in his third season here at Kirkwood. They made the title game a season ago, just fell short to Staley in that championship game. And here they are again in 2012 Show me bowl right here in St. Louis. He's done an outstanding job with this team. And there's another guy that's just really rebuilt this program at Fort Osage. Ryan Schartz in his eighth season, been the conference coach of the year. He came here back in 2005 and really got this program turned around. They've been outstanding ever since. They made the title game in 2009 and back now in 2012. Neither of these programs has ever won a state championship. That will obviously change here tonight. Yeah, and again, it all starts with Stephen McBee for Porto Sage. But again, let's not forget about that defense of Porto Sage. They run a 4-2-5. And believe me, these guys, excuse me, 3-5-3, three, 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 they have got some safeties. They've got some people who can flow to the football. There's going to be a lot of action and a lot of contact. Let's throw it down to our sideline guy that's joined us once again, Corey Riggs. Corey, take it away. Hey, thanks, Neil. It's great to be back again. And guys, everybody in St. Louis knows what goes on on Turkey Day. That's the game between Webster Groves and Kirkwood. The only question each year is whether or not it will be the varsity or the JV playing. Again, this year it was the JV squads because Kirkwood is here playing for a state championship. They won the won the Frisco Bell yesterday, Webster Groves did, with a final score of 29 to 21. The all-time series now, Webster Groves leads at 53 to 40 with five ties. But today, guys, the Pioneers would be happy to trade the Frisco Bell for a state championship. Oh, you know that's right, Corey. And that is such a big game here in the St. Louis area. 
homecoming for everybody. And they get a tremendous crowd for that ball game. And of course, since Kirkwood is playing here in the state title, they played it with the JVs. And yeah, we had a dynamic game last year with Kirkwood and Staley. It was a battle back and forth, fierce contact on both sides of the ball. And right now, we've got the crowd, we've got the energy. We've been waiting for the heavyweight battle, and now it's coming to us, Neil. Don't back down now, buddy. Back deep is Darby and McBee, and this is Darby at his five. And he is out to the 25-yard line on that return. Darby reigns. There is Stephen McBee. This guy has done everything here at Fort Osage. We talk about dual threat. Almost 1,900 yards passing, 1,400 yards rushing, 17 touchdown passes, and 16 rushing touchdowns. And yeah, let's see how he throws the ball again. If they can win on the outside, they think it can do a lot of good things. He's going right to the air, comes near side, and he's got his receiver down at about the 29 or 30 yard line. On the catch, that is Jesse McBee. That's his brother. Jesse is a sophomore, and he's been a very good sophomore this season. Caught over 30 balls. And there's that offensive line. Dalton Miller, a good one up front. Logan Stevens, and going right to work on second down. Fort Osage, maybe a yard on that carry. Spiller and Leachman on the defensive line for Kirkwood. Two guys will be saying their names a lot tonight. Also 75, Taylor, 6'3", and oh, he looks close to three bills to me, Neil. <laughs> big, big guy up front. Stephen McBee going far sideline, got his receiver right near the first down marker, and I think he's got it. On the catch, that's the leading receiver on the season, Brandon Winters. That's his 41st catch of the season, over 700 yards coming in. He's a good one. Yeah, nice job, Stephen McBee, getting outside the pocket on the roll that time. Again, throwing the ball across the hash mark, completion on the play. No huddle for this Fort Osage offense, and they go right to work again on the catch. That is Willie Penniman. His 17th catch of the season. We look at that Kirkwood defense across the front. Matt Berry is outstanding up there. He leads the charge along with some other good ones. Jared Bishop. Jared defense. Bishop. Yep. He's the defensive, defensive player, player of the year in the conference, conference and the twin brother of Jordan Bishop. And the handoff going to number 25, Jesse McBee. That's Jesse McBee, and guess who was on on tackle number four? Jared Bishop. Nice job wrapping up. And again, you can see the movement of Jared Bishop at that linebacker position all over the place. Yeah, he came in with 82 tackles on this season. Third down four for the Indians. McBee going up top. It's yeah. inter oh, oh, nearly intercepted. Back there in the coverage, Harris. Andre Harris. A guy with all kinds of athletic talent headed to Iowa. Again, just a design quarterback rollout. A little bit of pressure. Balls thrown behind his re receiver in that time. Brandon Winters and Harris almost coming away with the pick. I think he didn't need to jump. When he jumped, he kind of lost control of the ball. But good job of Steve McBee initially getting some things going. But you got to make sure you protect the ball. You're seeing the speed here of this defense for Kirkwood. Fourth down five upcoming for Fort Osage. They're in punt formation. Nobody deep for Kirkwood. Stephen McBee is the punter on this team. And he gets it away. Angling toward the near sideline and out of bounds with a positive bounce for Kirkwood. Mark it out at the 36-yard line of the Pioneers. And here comes Jordan Bishop, player of the year in his conference. On the offensive side of the ball, as we mentioned, his twin brother is the defensive <laughs> player of the year in the conference. So you got all kinds of bishops coming at you here tonight. And he will lead the charge. And I'm going to tell you what, one, one young man I think you want to circle also, too. We get a chance, number 33, Ramon Alton. Uh, he's another special running back there at the tailback position. They fake it to him on the play action, going upstairs. Had a receiver out there. Streaking up the sideline, Clyde Benson with his 4-5 speed. Ooh. But he was overthrown that time. Here is that offensive line. Matt Berry flips it Leachman. over on offense. The backs and receivers. Some firepower there, Bo. Yeah, he got speed at, at the wide receiver at the tailback position. That's what I'm saying. You think you've had your track shoes on now. 
folks, this is where you're going to see where the rubber meets the road here with Kirkwood. Second down, 10. And Bishop gives to Altman. What a change He's direction. got some room, and he pounds forward to the 41-yard line. Ramon Alton. Here's the starting defense for Fort Osage. They have been outstanding, this defense has. Oh, they had Tumasabe. I'm going to let you say a few of the names. you got to get me warmed up here. But Talia Tusa, so he's a good one. Oh, Samson yeah. Sia back there. This defense will light you up. Third down and four for Kirkwood. Bishop in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. A little bit Clyde too Benson. tall for him. That's Benson. And again, the ball just thrown behind the receiver. Benson just on the in route that time. Created the separation, but the ball was actually thrown behind him. No chance on the catch. And I think it was Darby Reigns in the coverage for Fort Osage that helped to break that up. So, both defenses. Standing up, yeah, got some things going. You can see that both teams feel like they want to get something done on the edges, throwing the football, with talking with the coaches this week. They felt like, hey, they had speed on the outside, could hit some big plays. And to kick it away, that is Doyle, and it bounds down to the 26-yard line. And we'll take a break. No score in the Class 5 State Championship. This is Show Me Bowl 2012. Boo! <laughs> hey, hey, where are you going? Kick it by me. I'm number one in this class. I rule this lab. I'm number one. Hey, hey, I don't think so. Yes! Weather! I am a king! Woo! You wouldn't do it there. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options. To help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there? Hey. That's a new maze record. Oh, nice. Really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba -da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Thank you. Can I help you today? Uh, no thanks. I'm just looking. Oh, this is cute. <clears throat> so? You wouldn't do it there. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Like they're the fashion police. <laughs> Beautiful night in St. Louis. We're indoors. Edward Jones Dome. Show Me Bowl 2012. Class 5 championship. Third game of the day. And it's been a fun day here in the Dome. Fort Osage football, first and ten. Give it back to Jesse McBee. He's ahead for a couple of yards. One of the first guys Leachman. to get in there and make the stop. Leachman. And also Blake Goddard was in there. He's had a great season, Goddard has. 74 tackles coming in. That's him in your picture, number 15. Going to hurry up offense here, trying to get people out of position. Hopefully get maybe a quick strike. Again, you're going to have to make them honor the run, Kirkwood. Still got to be able to pound it out inside. Maybe not many yards, but you got to make them think about it. If not, comes one-dimensional. That defensive line tears you up. Gain of one on the Blitz play. The edge. McBee over the middle. Has his receiver winners. And that's a gain of seven. Let's go down to Corey. Hey, guys, I know you've been talking about dual-threat quarterback Steve McBee for Ford Osage. It's also good to point out he's a coach's best friend. When we talked to his coach, Ryan Schartz, he said not only is he a great quarterback, but he's a maximum effort guy. He gives you everything he can on the field, so much so he decreased his reps in practice this year just to save him through the long season. And we ought to point out, too, he's also number one in the senior class. He's a smart quarterback, too. Well, he went upstairs that time looking for his big tight end. That is Devontae Mosby. 
and just a little too tall, but he was streaking freely down the field. Yeah, Moses Malone just taking off down the field, and here's the throw. I talked about Stephen McBean. Look at the tight spiral. It's right there. Got to be able to take and slam dunk that ball well, in the end zone. He's a Division I basketball prospect, so why not? I tell you, you're going to have to go upstairs and get you're that You're going one. to have to, but nice throw by Stephen McBee. Again, the rollout, but can't make the completion. Here again, Stahl going to have to punt the ball back to Kirkwood. And again, it's McBee, and again, nobody back for Kirkwood. Rugby-style punt. And McBee gets this one. Away, a better kick this time. It'll bound down to the 30-yard line, and they down it there. This Kirkwood team, as we said, has never won a state championship. They lost to Staley last year in this championship game. Jordan Bishop, who's thrown for that amount of yards, but also run for a good chunk of yardage this season, about 600. He's also scored 34 touchdowns. And I thought last week against Parkway Central, he might have played his most complete football game. This team has had to come back during the year against Webster Grove, down a couple touchdowns. Some of they had to kick a last second field goal. But last week, Jordan Bishop got it done. Yeah, he's really been on fire in this playoff run. He goes out in the flat to Benson. They like to get him out in the open floor, but how about this Fordo Sage defense flowing to the football? I believe Mamu was in there. Mamu, Toei, Atua. Yeah, I got it. Almost. I, almost. Give it to me, buddy. It is Towie Atusa. Towie Atusa, excuse me. It's going to be a long evening, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Mamu Towie Atusa. Mamu, Shamu, get and it Coach done. Coach Sharks told us that he's really been a guy that has overachieved what they ever thought about him. And he's just done a great job now as a senior, and they have stopped him in the backfield. And again, they have this 3-5-3 defense. What makes it hard is the offensive line really can't fire out. They're trying to run a counter play. The but you have, you have all the different charges coming at you and where linebackers are coming from. Titus Tyler was back there. Again, yeah, defense line's going one way, linebackers going the other way. So again, as long as everybody gets through their gap responsibility, it's usually doom on the offense. That play, they got it done. And up the middle, this defense is strong, heart and soul of it. Mamu Tawiatusa, Samson Sia, and also Joseph Tumasavi. Up top they go, and this one's gonna go! That is Benson for a touchdown! 73 yards on the hookup! And that was Hightower in the coverage that time, and the man covered, and it looked like he just lost on that one. Thought he had help over the top by the safety. And again, great job in the post pattern. Quarterback had time. As you can see, Jordan Bishop really has improved his throwing motion this year. How about that tight spiral? Talk about a big chunk play on the board quick. He put the pass right on point, and they like to get Benson out in the open field. They I think do. we saw why. <laughs> Four five speed on Benson. On the back side of the five. Down side of a 440, streaking. I mean, it was just a simple statement. He's great in the open field. <laughs> and he was gone. 73-yard hookup, Bishop to Benson. And that is his 28th catch of the season for Benson. That is touchdown number eight on the season. The 5'9", 165 senior. And there is Jordan Bishop, the 6'1", 200 senior. As that drive goes 71 yards in three plays, but it was a 73-yard touchdown pass, and it took just a little over a minute to get it done. Kirkwood strikes first. Bishop to Benson. And the Pioneers are on top in the Class 5 title game. by me. I'm number one in this class. I rule this lab. I'm number one. Hey, hey, I don't think so. Yes! Winner! I am a king! Woo! You wouldn't do it there. Woo! So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. 
the new maze record. Oh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Jordan Bishop has just thrown a 73-yard touchdown pass to Cedric Benson. There's your drive, but they lost a couple of yards, and they had that defense kind of scooting up, picking in, taking a peek in the backfield, nice Baldy, and the then they went upstairs and a beautiful pass by Bishop. Yeah, definitely some miscommunication in that defense. And I said Cedric Benson. I meant Clyde Benson. It's Clyde Benson that caught that touchdown pass. And one of the ways you beat that 3-5-3 defense and with those safeties coming up so quick is you go ahead with four verticals. They did that time, got behind coverage. Big play for Mr. B. And to kick it off, Brendan Doyle. Back deep, Reigns and McBee. And this is Reigns that scoops it up at the 25. And running over people out to the 47-yard line. Great field position for the Indians. Yeah, just take a look at it. Let's look at this from the touchdown pass. It's just the play action. Ball snap. There's the fake handoff to Ramon Alton. Take a look. Let's see if the linebackers slow and step up. Did take one step forward. Can't quite see on the outside. There's Benson wide open. And again, mistake on coverage that time. It was Danae Hightower. He thought he had safety help. None there. Big play for Mr. Benson. Some play action now for Fordo Sage. The yeah. chase is on and a sack. Running him down. Antonio Leachman is fourth sack of the season. And you get sacks a lot of times. It's just about not only doing a good technique, but also keep your motor going. Stephen McBee better know that clock's got to go off because this speed of this defense here for Kirkwood showing its ugliness right now as they had another sack here in the game. Leachman 6'2", 250, athletic with great feet. Here's Stephen McBee out to midfield and into Kirkwood territory at the 49-yard line. Just a little bit on that zone read that time. Nice job by the quarterback, Stephen McBee, working with this tailback, riding him a couple steps, get the defense to commit, pulls the ball, and again, talking with coach. He said, hey, we got to make sure coach Matt Irvin said, hey, we got to contain Stephen McBee. He extends too many plays with his feet. Smart, tough kid that runs a 4-6 and rips a pass this way and intended for winners it's incomplete and that'll bring up fourth down i think he just tripped on the turf it looked like his foot got caught well you heard corey say stephen mcbee is number one in his class obviously he could go play at the next level he's getting some looks but he's more comfortable in a tree stand hunting fishing <laughs> Whatever. And, and I don't think he uses a bow and arrow or a gun. I just think he chases the deers <laughs> down and gets them by the antlers. I tell you what, he's very, very good runner. But right there, got to be able to make the completion trip on the play. And another three and out for Fort Osage. But that's not going to be an out. It's McBee on the run. Yeah. Now it is out on fourth down. He'll be short of it. And that flips it over to Kirkwood. Is that Jordan Brown? Cornerback number 23 on the tackle. I think they saw this all the way. Watch Jordan Brown get up on this play from inside. Beats the block on the outside of number 34, Jacobs, that time. And Andre Harris there. helped turn him in yeah. as well. Got contained on the outside. Good job with the rip and coming through the block. You got to cut people on that play. You can't stay in block. Roll them. Now, so far, the Kirkwood defense has come to play and has shut down this Fort Osage offense. Alton to midfield to the 49, actually, of Fort Osage. Alton been banged up a little bit this year. Yeah, he's been battling he's been that ankle, ankle injury, injury all season. Little zone read on this play again. You got the split packs. 
Again, a little full block in the middle. Alton kind of works backside. Nice job on that backside tackle by Barry, number 74. Moving his feet, moving the pile. And he hit. Alton is the school's all-time leading rusher. And he comes in with almost 900 yards on the season. Bishop going upstairs again. He's got a receiver again. It's too tall for Benson. Oh, those two might have hooked up again. That is three times that Benson has been running free and clear in the secondary, and they've hit him once for the big touchdown. Yeah, Darby Reigns on coverage this time, but again, quarterback's got to lead his receiver wide open for running the post that time. Go ahead and lay it out. Instead, he throws it back over the right shoulder. Benson, no chance. If you just lay that out in front, you see the post boundary is running. Touchdown on the play. Offensive coordinator Lorenzo Brinkley dialing up the plays here today. Quarterback getting a lot of time to throw. Brinkley's a guy that played at Nebraska, and he's got some athletes out there as ball handlers. And you've already seen Benson, another really good one is Harris. They like to try to get the ball to in open space. Here's Bishop. And I'll tell you, the intended receiver Benson heard the footsteps of Mamu. Mamu. Shamu was coming across the seas and ready. <laughs> and he wasn't about to go over. No. The alligator arms were there that time. He wasn't coming as a friendly whale. He was coming as a shark. Mamu Talia Tusa, number 33. They can cover a lot of ground. That linebacker in safety position. Offsides here on Porto Sage. Yeah, it's fourth down. And those five yards will not give them a first down, but it'll be about fourth and two. And, Neil, using this 3-5-3, three, three, you have the defensive line, linebackers moving all over the place. Denmark, you can call the field. Encroachment on the defense, still fourth. But Fordo Sage does a real good job of just playing straight on this 3-5-3. Three, three. Everybody takes one gap and stays on this one. I think they're going to have to loosen some things up, bring some blitzes, because right now Jordan Bishop, too much time in the pocket to throw the ball. He's got his twin brother back in the backfield with him, Jared Bishop, number four. And he runs right behind him. Jordan Bishop for the first down of the 33-yard line. And you see Tyler Titus, number 42, initially brought the penetration. And again, it's almost like here it is. Here's the fake, a little full block. And again, they go for his running back, his brother, and he gets good job on the keeper down the field. Call him Barry, number 74. Nice job by Barry getting around the edge there, getting a block in the second level. First and 10, Kirkwood. Ball marked at the 33-yard line of Fort Osage. Good seal block that time on the nose tackle, Fort Osage, number 98. Wallace. Bishop going upstairs for Harris. He's got the football at the five-yard line. That's a gain of 28. But I'll tell you what, give credit to number 24, James Willis, on this play. Watch him pick up the blitz, come back. Now Jordan Bishop's able to make the throw. Harris climbs to the sky, comes back. And again, the coverage that time is by Ejir. Koida Ejir. And that time, and again, the ball's just over underthrown. No way you can come back and get it. But again, the quarterback had time to make that because he got protection in the pocket. How about the firepower with these wideouts? Benson and Harris. Weston, you'll see him. J.J. Jones. On the read, Bishop. Oh, close to the goal line. Steamroll. He got crushed when he hit about the one yard line. Samson, see ya. Samson and Goliath coming on this one. Take a look on the zone read. He pulls it again. I'm going to run with it now. Watch Samson come in here and finish this off. <laughs> wow. Sam Sia. See Another one of the guys that Coach Sharks just calls I mean, the heart and soul of the defense. Got a penalty on the play here that's going to get the call. Going to step it back. Illegal shift on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So that steps it back. Looks like they're going to mark it about the 10-yard line. Jordan Bishop has thrown for over 1,800 yards this season. Run for 634 touchdowns he's accounted for. 
What packs? Pick up again. Pressure. The chase is on. There's he scrambles there. away. The flag on the play. Gonna He's going to lose about five yards. We're going to get number 65 on the hold here. Man, the Fort Osage shock troop was back there to chase him. They came. To I think when he's got a face mask on this, I thought initially it was holding on Beatty. But I think this is going to go against Fort Osage on the face mask. It is a face mask. Watch the pressure on this play. Finally getting to Bishop this time on the outside. And that was 25. Jesse McBee coming off on the left side. And again, there's the strength of Jordan Bishop. Look at his feet, the way he can dance. As I said, tough man to bring down. Just finds a way to extend the play every time. I think that was Valifi, 29, that was putting the pressure on there initially. Is it Valifi coming off the edge? I think you're right. Bishop looking to throw it. He's got plenty of time motioning to receivers and then just throws it away. Good coverage on the back side that time. Benson was in the vicinity. Nice job by the Fort Osage defense. Yeah, they were looking for MC Smith, the master of ceremonies, where they closed the curtain on him real quick. Good job by quarterback Jordan Bishop that time. Seeing that, just getting rid of the ball, throw it out of bounds, live for another day, make another play. Yeah, I think it was Benson that was running across the goal line there and just kind of threw it away. Another, and you live to see another day. Yeah. Second down, seven. Second down and goal, we should say. But Baldy, was there a flag on the play? Yes, there was. Mm -hmm. Make a call on the field. Looks like they went ahead and declined it for the Ineligible downfield on the offense. That penalty is declined. Second down. Okay. Coach Sharks. But what a job he and this staff has done. 54 and 8 over the last four seasons. After they got this thing turned around. And here they are in the state championship game again. They played here in 2009. Still looking for the first state title. Hoping tonight's the night. Same for Kirkwood. Looking for their first state title. They've got the ball. Second down and goal. Bishop has an open receiver, and it's incomplete. It was intended in the end zone Tight end. for Mason Welsh, 6'3", 205, senior. Yeah, a little play action, and again, Barry pulls on this. Couldn't quite put enough on the football. Never really set his feet. Tight end was open that time. Joseph Tumasavi was out there in the coverage. coverage. But again, wide open tight end released on that. And again, somebody blew coverage that time because, again, looking in the backfield, you got to make sure you don't look at all the distractions taking place there with backs going back and forth. Find your key and stick with it. Eighth play of the drive that started at their own 47. Third down goal. Bishop. Up top to his brother, Jordan. Touchdown. And what a way to change directions. Came out of the backfield thinking he was going to come over the left shoulder. Had to turn all the way around on that to come away to catch. Jordan Bishop to Jared Bishop. The twin brothers hook up for the touchdown. The J&J &J factor happening quick tonight. What a throw that time. And again, brother bailing out brother. Touchdown on the play. The Offensive Player of the Year in the conference to the Defensive, defensive player, player of the Year in the conference who was playing offense on the play. And of course, Coach Irvin's probably the Mother of the Year in the conference. And he just released out of the backfield and again just some blown coverage by Ford Osei. Back to the coverage was pretty good. Let's take a look at it. Just coming out of the backfield. And again, that was number 42 on the coverage for Ford Osage. That was Tyler Titus. You can see that he just left him go. He was looking at Jordan Bishop. Again, this is what I'm talking about. It's a zone read initially. You've got to stay with your assignment. He does it. Bishop just releases free. There's the mistake, and there's the touchdown on the play. Jordan Bishop to Jared Bishop. Second touchdown pass of the game for Jordan Bishop. And a 14 to nothing lead for Kirkwood. And just by freezing him for one second, by taking your eyes off your responsibility and looking at the quarterback, it stopped your feet. No way you can recover on the play. Nice little release by 
The ball sure. handlers on this team for Kirkwood, outstanding. I told you, they, they've been working, you've been reading all year long about coming back to the Dome, and they wanted to make sure that they finished business this year, and they're coming out and making business right now. So to kick it off, Brendan Doyle with a 14 to nothing lead for Kirkwood. And back deep, Reigns and McBee. This is Reigns at the 11. And Darby Reigns slips at the 23-yard line, taken down by Blake Goddard. Let's go down to Corey. Hey, guys, I know you've been talking a lot about Jordan and Jared Bishop, and twins are always an interesting story, and these guys are no different. They're kind of the uh, same uh, same side of either side of the coin here on the offense and defense, but they've run track together. They've played basketball together. Coach Irvin even told us they took an ACT prep course together, and, you know, guys, if the right school plays their cards right, they might get a match set of two very good football players come next year. That's right. They've done it all together. And why not stay together at the next level? And great coverage as the intended receiver, Winters, was absolutely blanketed that time by Eric Phillips. And I'm going to tell you what, they are not going to be able to, Florida Sage cannot abandon the run at this time. You are going to have to continue because you fall behind by another touchdown. You go three and out right here. Defensively, Kirkwood is going to be licking their chops. They're coming after Stephen McBee every time. McBee. Out of the flat, ball is caught there by Penniman. And he's ahead for about six yards. That'll bring up a third down. Actually, they're going to give him seven yards. Third down three at the 29-yard line of Fort Osage. Playing soft coverage on that side. They know about Willie Penniman's speed. They're not going to let him get over the top here. Tighter man coverage on the outside. Seaman McBee getting the call from the sidelines. Third down three. They're one of four on third down here tonight. The blitz. McBee. And it's incomplete. He was looking for Mosby. This is the Class 5 state championship here in Missouri. We're in St. Louis at the Edward Jones Dome. Show Me Bowl 2012. Kirkwood and Fort Osage. And you can see right there, there was confusion on the outside that time. Number 18, Brandon Winters, and also Mosby. Somebody didn't run the right route. That's why defensively they were just blanketed. You can see Coach Sharks not very happy right now. People not taking care of their responsibility. And as I said, you can't afford to fall down another touchdown to this Kirkwood offense. The speed of this team right now, lightning quick. Bryant Boyd is back deep for Kirkwood. And it's Stephen McVee to kick it away. They nearly got a piece of it. And Boyd calls for the fair catch at his 35. Got to come up with a stop now. Going to be in this game, I'll tell you, because just, you're seeing right now Kirkwood's going over the top. Got a lot of comfort level. Your quarterback's getting time like this, Neil, to throw the ball down the field. You can let those deeper routes, those seven, those nine routes, post corners, corner routes develop. And those are those big plays, those big chunk plays. And we saw in the last game in class one what the difference was. Penny was in the second half, got a few of those, and that was the difference in the game. Here right now, it looks like it's changing it for Kirkwood. Well, it's going to be tough to match up with those receivers with all that speed they have. On the zone read, Jordan Bishop ahead for about seven to the 42-yard line. And he does a really nice job of keeping his hip to hip with his running back on that. And what that does is it allows you to hide that football so well. So every, everybody gets faked out. He kept it, keeps seven yards on the play. We talked about in the playoffs, he's really been on a run. I mean, there's been three games in the playoffs where he's accounted for four touchdowns throwing and running the football. And he's just been outstanding down the stretch, leading his team from the quarterback position. Alton. They pitch this one back. It's right. Alton, and he's out across midfield. He's got a first down. And there you bring the motion coming back, and now Alton comes in motion off the zone read, and he becomes the option to pitch this on the option. Take a look at it. You fake the inside in the zone read, and now here's Alton coming around on the back side. You can see not running with all the speed, but again, nice job in terms of getting the pitch outside, getting some room for your speed people to make something happen. He was knocked out by Darby Reigns, but not before he picked up the first down. It's at the 49-yard line of Kirkwood. Here's Alton again, and once again, Darby Reigns. This time after a gain of about three to the 48-yard line of Fort Osage. Took it inside and outside. 
Good job here by Kirkwood now working the edges. They've done it throwing. Now you're getting a sweep outside. They want to get those linebackers moving. They want to get that horizontal stretch of the field. So then it's going to open up those creases for the quarterback on the zone read. Kirkwood moving that football. They lead it 14 to nothing. We approach the end of the first quarter here in St. Louis. Class 5 title game. Alton delivers a stiff arm, but they keep after him. Getting there first was Ejir, Koide Ejir. Koide Ejir, He yeah. got the stiff arm, but he came right back for more and they, ended up bringing him down. And again, just the split backs, the underhand handoff, and Ejir and staying at home, holding on for dear life, grab some jersey. And then what Coach said they did this week, a lot of open field tackling, grab a jersey and hold on for dear life. And Rosales finished him off. We've played one quarter. So far, it's Kirkwood. The Pioneers on top by 14. Show Me Bowl 2012 on Fox Sports Midwest. Fourteen to nothing, Kirkwood. After one quarter of play, stop by the Bomberito Chevy Superstore in South County to see all the new Chevrolet lineup of cars, trucks, and sports utilities. Log on to BomberitoChevy.com for more info. Third down for Kirkwood. Third and fourteen from their forty-four. Good protection up front, Bishop. Intercepted by Darby Reigns. Under through the ball. Out of bounds at the 36-yard line of Fort Osage. And he just got hit. It looked like the protection was good at first, Neil. He just got hit. And one of the keys that Matt Irvin had talked about was turnovers. We had to protect the ball. Here he's standing in the pocket. Again, just pulls the string as he feels the pressure. Underthrows the ball. And then they're coming across number 12. You're right, Darby Reigns. Nice job at the safety position. Go make a play. Go get involved in the game, does on that. Darby Reigns, 6'1", 175, senior for Fort Osage. They're now plus 17 turnover margin on the season. That's the 25th turnover they've collected on their opponents on the year. And Darby Reigns takes the seat, turns it over to the offense for Fort Osage, trailing 14 to nothing. And Baldy, have you stated many times, you want to see them going after that running game yeah, a little stay bit. With it. Gotta stay with it, gotta make it happen. He rides it out with Jesse McBee, hands it off to his sophomore brother, who's ahead for about three yards. And I thought maybe that was going to be a keeper by Stephen McBee. Fort Osage, 12 and one on the season. A tough, hard-fought game against Ozark to make it here into the final. All the accolades we've talked about, Stephen McBee, player of the year in the conference, just like Jordan Bishop is for Kirkwood. And there's the running game for five yards on two plays. It brings up a third down and five. Well, a manageable third down, but again, you're making this defense at least have to play the run. So you, out. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You've got the Bishop brothers and the McBee brothers. <laughs> a family affair. 
Back to throw it, Stephen McBee. Ball is knocked free! And the chase is on, and it's covered up by Caleb Smith. But that one was popped out of there. By Spiller, 56, I think it was, he came across. Stephen McBee just trying to extend the play with his legs. But Spiller, 56, take a look at design rollout. Again, has to come back inside. You gotta protect the football. And that is Spiller, 56, who reaches through and almost comes away creating the big play. But actually it is, because now he's stopped him, and you got to punt weight from what, what, your own 25-yard line. Yeah, it sets up another as good as three and out here. It's the fourth three and out. And it's going to be McBee back into the punt formation. And he gets this kind of rugby-style punt away that will bound down inside the 40. It's effective to the 33-yard line of Kirkwood. And they got a turnover, couldn't do much with it that time. See what Kirkwood does if they look to come out and get a little bit of a run going. One of the things they wanted to do in this game was protect the football defensively, contain the running game of Stephen McBee, limit the big plays. They've done that. They've done good on also too offensively on the edge. But again, turnovers in the last series and have those eventually your opponent takes advantage. The one big play that could have got Kirkwood was that Mosby streak up the numbers here on the right sideline just a little bit too tall oh, but one that maybe should have come away with the catch put it out there hitching the fingers got to come away with the ball first and ten pioneers at their own 32 and a half yard line option great job just man. making people miss there was absolutely nothing there and he got nice two stem. yards out of it watch hightower the linebacker there's a stem by the defense to strength watch hightower go but he's got quarterback go hit him that's a nice job. You got penetration that time, but the quarterback that time, Jordan Bishop, you got to be able to attack. When you stop and dance, guess what? You ain't going to dance. You're going to get tackled. <laughs> Titus Tyler in there, also in on that stop last time. Tuai Tuwala. Tuai Tuwala, way to go. TNT. Four in there. And incomplete falling down. Clyde Benson was the intended receiver. Trying to do a little stop on a dime and come back almost like on a little option, but feet came out, out from underneath them. This turf looks slick. Look We've slick seen a lot of slips slip today, no question about it. On third down, Kirkwood is two of five, and both of those conversions are touchdowns. It looks like we're going to have offsides on Porto Sage again. Well, that makes it a little more manageable. Tuala, 94. Third Dead down, ball foul. Four. Encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Up they had Tuala, number 94. Again, now you make it a manageable third down against a highly explosive offense. The second penalty here in the first half for them. Could prove to be costly again on this drive, allowing Kirkwood to continue. On defense. Nice job in the coverage that time. A little bit of heat on Bishop. The chase is on, and they've got him. No gain on the play. Nathan Elo Elo initially on the charge. And then I think he fed him right into Tyler. Yeah, I've been wanting to see Elo. Nice job on the pass rush that time, closing the corner. And here's the speed, the closing speed coming, and then gang tackle that also, and too. And Ejir was in there. Ejir also, too, closing the door. That's Titus Tyler, 42, and Ejir, number four, was in there after the chase by Nathan Elo Elo. Fourth here. Fourth down, three. And I don't see a punter. No, not at all here, trying to get the call from the sidelines. It looks like they are going to go ahead and Now he drops it. back, a little quick kick. Bishop did. A booming kick. Nice punt there that bounds back to the 27-yard line where they down it. And we'll take a break. Class 5 state championship game. Kirkwood on top, 14 to nothing over Fort Osage. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. That's a new maze record. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. 
To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Kirk went on top 14 to nothing. Farmers Insurance is a proud sponsor of the Missouri State High School Activities Association. Call 800 Farmers or visit farmers.com to find a local agent. We are insurance. We are farmers. And a nice crowd here at the Dome in St. Louis, the Edward Jones Dome. And Fort Osage trying to get something going on offense. They trail it 14 to nothing here in the Class 5 State Championship game. Stephen McBee. Now close the door quick. Penetration. Picks his way ahead for about three yards on first end. Oh, barrage number foot 54. Burge number 54. The initial barrage. Barrage, excuse me. Initial penetration forced that back inside. And the big number 75, TNT, sitting right there, ready to blow things up. Taylor, nice job staying at home at the nose tackle. Yeah, Trefenu Taylor. Only gave him two yards on the play. Second down, eight for Fort Osage. Steve McBee has his receiver at the 39-yard line. That's caught there by Jesse McBee, his sophomore brother. Yeah, going down to the shoestrings to get this one. Again, Stephen McBee sets up, gets his feet down, and delivers the ball. Not with all the speed you want, but his brother Jesse goes down and saves him, makes the catch, first down on the play. Well, Jesse's a good athlete as he well. Is. That is his 33rd catch of the season. And Jesse McBee has also run the football for 367 yards. He's caught the football for 430 yards coming in. They're going upstairs. Penniman broke off the route, and a flag is thrown. And this will go against Kirkwood. And there you go, nice job in terms Herman of... Herman Tapasoa, what do you want to say about him? Herman Tapasoa, nice job in terms of the blitz picks up that time. Blitz Defense. picks up. Ten-yard penalty, first down. Herman's back there wearing number eight, personal protector of the quarterback. He was a personal protector. He's the bodyguard. <laughs> well, Herman goes 5'8", and a fire hydrant-like 210. Ah, good size there. I'll tell you what, he is a felt young man. And he will keep that quarterback clean in the backfield. Quick Coming out. near side, got Penniman. Just short of the first down in the coverage, Eric Phillips. And how about that out route that time by Penniman? How about the throw by Stephen McBee? Ball out quick. That had some mustard it on did. it, too. He delivered. I told you, he's throwing the ball much better than we saw in the first game of the season. Has improved in terms of the velocity of the football goal on both sides, left and right now. And you asked Coach Schartz about that. We'll pick that up here in just a second. Well, you got time. No huddle offense. They're looking in for the play. Well, he said he limited a lot of his reps in terms of from practice, so he's got some more strength during the game. He's fresher with his arm. Yeah, Corey alluded to that earlier. Here's McBee, Here got his receiver. That's a first down as Fort Osage is moving it, and that's his leading receiver, Winters. And he's just, again, working against man coverage. Design rollout gives the quarterback an easier view. Again, can step into the throw. Winters on the outside. That's a mismatch. Again, just running the deep out route against number three on that play. Is that Richie on coverage? Steve McBee going upstairs again. And oh, good job. nice coverage, Winters. double coverage back there. He was looking for winners. And back there, Andrew Wilson, a linebacker that dropped back in coverage. But I think Winners comes up here and plays defense. Watch him come back. 
and knocked the ball away because he thought the linebacker was going to make the interception. But on this play, Mosby's wide open on the post. See if Stephen McVie doesn't come back this time, hold the ball a little bit, and go to his tight, go to his tight end running the post. Pattern. Yeah, obviously the free safety Edward Ritchie came over for help for yep. Kirkwood, and that left Mosby on the other well, side. Down. That brings up second down ten for Fort Osage. McBee to the 31. And they're making sure they wrap him up quickly. Nice tackle by Jared Bishop. And I'm going to tell you what, I think he's the spy on this. You know, I asked Coach about that. You're going to spy him. I, I think Jared Bishop, he's got one eyeball <laughs> on that quarterback, Stephen McBee. Antonio Leachman in on the stop again. 54, 6 2, 250, the senior. Third down, eight at the 30 for Fort Osage. Wins. Outside, going to run four verticals. McBee. Oh. Intended for Mosby in the coverage, Harris. And that'll bring up fourth down. Pressure on that time. Steve McBee had to get rid of the ball. Mosby didn't get around his head around on the route trying to run the comeback. Watch the pressure on the play. This destructs the, the timing of the play. And again, Herman that time, he looked like Herman Munster trying to move. And that was number 15. Blake Goddard. Yeah. Was in on the chase that time. Just a hard worker on this team. And the field goal unit is out there. This is going to be a 48-yard attempt. And on to try it, Hayden Baumgartner, the sophomore, all-conference for Fort Osage. And this one get there. Short, well short. Now Fort Osage put together a drive that time. And, and I'm going to tell you what, I think they've got to just stick, Neil, with the short and the intermediate routes. Forget the four deep verticals. You're not having success going over the top. Mosby dropped it. That time, pressure on the quarterback. Continue with just the crossing patterns, the quick outs, the post. You're beating man coverage, but what you're doing when you're making your quarterback stand in the pocket, the pressure now is getting to him. So let's see if they make that adjustment for Osage in the next series. That was an eight-play drive that started at their 27. They said move the ball up the field. Kirkwood has it now at the 20. Option. Option play. This is Alton and a nice play on the defensive end. Coming up, Koida Ejir. Man, have we called his name a few times here? Nice job of staying at home at the cornerback position here in the 3-5-3. You've got run support. That's the way to stay inside out. At least force it back inside. Got enough on Ramon Alton. And he does look a little banged up, doesn't he, Neil? Well, and also to Y.E. Tuwala, right there on your screen, came over to get himself a piece. <laughs> Mr. Hawaii himself got over there, brought the wave. He'll, he'll go ahead and get there at 5'8", 220, the junior. Second down and six for Kirkwood. Oh, and really this time, lined up in that little Wildcat formation, Blake Goddard He's takes it and runs with it for about a couple of yards. But Nathan, was that Elo Elo? Number 48 closing the door on that play. Much better job the last couple series really closing down. That's Elo, Elo, Elo right there. The defensive end position, take a look at him. He's just lined up, watch him walk inside. Again, he's got quarterback. Nice job of knowing your assignment. Don't look at the motion coming around. Now he closed the door on that quarterback, Bishop. Third down and four for Kirkwood. Roll out. Jordan Bishop back in there. Got his receiver. That's a first down. It's caught by Benson. Yeah, Benson gave him a target. Huh? Settled down on that curl route that time. And I would just say to Darby Range, you got to drive on that ball. Here's the design rollout. Quarterback has time to see down the field. And again, nice job by Benson on the curl, giving your quarterback a target. Ball thrown with good accuracy this time. Rains right on top of it. Catch is made first down. It's a first down. Benson with another catch. They had the big 73-yard hookup earlier for the first touchdown of the ball game. And now Kirkwood on the move. Moving the pocket. Give Jordan some time to throw the ball. On the zone read, Jordan Bishop <laughs> works his way to the 44-yard line. I'm here. I'm there. I'm going down the lane, folks, and I'm going to slam dunk this. Show you a leg. Take it away. I'm here. I'm gone. Look at this shake. Nice block by his right tackle that time. Robert Young also, too. <laughs> Jordan Bishop just showing a shake. Vauifi and also it was uh, in there 
Tawia Tusa. Mamu Tawia Tusa in there on the stop. That brings up Mamu second down and Tawia one Tusa. at the 44. 44 of Kirkwood. Jordan Bishop to throw it. Scrambles out of there. Got a nice block in the backfield. And he is out to midfield. And he's got another first down. Yeah, he did get the first down here, but Nathan Elo, Elo, he takes the inside rush from the defensive end position. It's a nice bull rush, but again, somebody's got to be in contain. No one's there. So if you take that rush, you got to make sure you communicate there in terms of who's going to cover the quarterback. Jordan Bishop, too good an athlete, you leave a lane first down the play. Well, I think he got taken down by 68 Robert Young, who's an outstanding wrestler. At 6'4", 255 for Kirkwood. Little inside handoff. This is Alton dancing his way up the sideline and down to the 31-yard line before Vauifi and Tyler came over to make the stop. And here's a flag that might be a face mask. Yeah, it came for that from the field judge that time. And again, there's just the movement of Jordan Bishop to his left and coming back with motion. The underneath handoff, Alton makes the run and be able to get to the edge. Watch the flow of the defense. And that's what Jordan Bishop does. Gets everybody to take that extra step. It gets you going the wrong direction. It's so hard to come back, especially against Alton, such a good athlete running the ball. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Watch Bishop here in the movement, then comes just back. And again, we've got a little power O play. Guard pulls, gets, gets a seal on the linebacker. And again, too easy. Defensive ends get cost, lost in the motion. And the Pioneers are on the move. Ball marked at the 15-yard line, first and 10. Leach a nice job pulling from the guard position, getting around, getting a block for your buddies. Only three rushing, a lot of time, Neil. Dropping eight. Bishop scrambles out of there. And the ball knocked away at the goal line. Going to have hold on the play. Jonah Tumasave back there at the goal line to knock it away. And a flag on the play. It'll be a hold against Kirkwood. Robert Young, 68. They got him this time. Had to throw it this time. He was disrobing people on the field. I think he was trying to do an ankle pick on this hold. Well, you saw Holding the down last on time. the offense. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. Only rushing three. Still able to get pressure. Take a look at Big Robert, the right tackle position. Nathan Elo Elo moving movement and just reaches out and not a lot. But again, as soon as they see you leave the framework of the defensive person, those arms stretched out, they're gonna go ahead and throw that yellow flag. I can write an encyclopedia on it. <laughs> Personalized encyclopedia. <laughs> I'll hey, now they got some folks up front. Oh, this they got some team. horses now. 74, Matt Berry, you talked about him, 6'2", 275. You also have 68, as we're talking about Robert Young, 255 Downer. up there. Alton scoots through there. And down inside the 25-yard line to the 24. And this is what makes him such good. This is a counter play. You're thinking it's going to go outside. The penetration stops the play in the backfield, but watch Alton. Here's the counter, pull your backside guard and tackle. But again, look at the penetration that time. Nathan Elo Elo in the backfield. But again, he finds that crease. And you like the way all these running backs this game, the way they finish, Neil, just driving their legs, making sure they're hitting people. And this is the eighth play of this drive that started at their own 20 for Kirkwood. Second down, 19 at the 24 of Fort Osage. Inside three minutes to play. Here in the first half, looking to the far sideline, got his receiver. It's caught there by Andre Harris, and that is close to the first down, but it looks like he's short by about two yards. He is. They ran the corner around, and again, it's because the play action fake, and you, I'll tell you what, Coach Matt Irvin is very right this year. That's how they change their offense. This play action is so much more effective. Jordan Bishop gets time in the pocket. Again, here's the fake, the inside handoff to Alton. Jordan Bishop steps to the left. Ball just underthrown a little bit for Harris. That's just a little bit more in the air. Maybe the catch and upfield for the touchdown. Third down one. Bishop, the chase wow, is on and he is, escapes. Neil. Now lets it fly. It's oh. nearly intercepted by Ejir. Koida nearly had that one pulled in. On this play, 
You love your quarterback. You hate your quarterback. <laughs> you love your quarterback. You don't know what to do. But I tell you, watch him on this design rollout. Here, voids it. Now going to stop throwing back across your body. You don't want to do it. Looking for Harris. But Ajir again dropping in the coverage. Almost coming away with a huge turnover. That'll bring the kicker on. And he'll try a field goal. Andrew Phillips in there for Kirkwood, the left footer. A 23-yarder. And he's got it. Let's go down to Corey. Hey, guys. Andrew Phillips, the pioneer kicker who just made good on that offering. He's a soccer player like a lot of kickers are today. All year long, he made it to practice on the pitch, then he made it to the football field. But the other day in their game against Summit, he hit the first ever game-winning kick of his career, a 29-yard field goal with only 11 seconds remaining to allow Kirkwood to advance in these playoffs. The team carried him off the field on their shoulders, and nothing would be bigger for that kicker today than for his leg to maybe send them to their state championship dream, guys. Well, he just made a difference right there, Corey, with the field goal from 23 yards with 2.05 left, 17 to nothing is the score Kirkwood on top. And as Corey said, they really had to rearrange practices yep. for Phillips so he could get from soccer to football. And How important it they is. They made it all work, and he's been a nice kicker, now a senior. Yeah, and following Kirkwood team. this year, behind by 14, came back in the last six minutes to win that game against Webster Groves. Then in Hazelwood East, down by 14, came back to win that 32-22. Summit in the regular season also had to come back from 10 down so this team knows about how to win football games. And this Fort Osage team right now, as that one is belted into the end zone, I think kicking it off that time was, it might have been Doyle that kicked it off. That thing was hammered. Stay with the running game. Stay with it the is Doyle. Stay with the outside zone to keep the horizontal stretch on the defense, but stick with the short and the intermediate routes. You're going to have to move methodically down the field. And the reason why you want to do that too, too Neil, is you're going to keep Kirkwood's offense off the field. You don't want to give him the ball back. And Fort Osage in some territory they're not used to right now. Mosby, they hook up with him at the 29-yard line right there on the stop. Edward Ritchie for Kirkwood. He's too big of a target. Nice job by Stephen McBee. Just sliding to his left and making throw. Now, that's just like a run. Nine yards on the play. Get lined up. Do it again. This is where you're going to have success right now. Clock ticking at 142. Mosby is 6'6", 220. Coming near side, nearly intercepted by Phillips. They wave it off. Eric Phillips stepping right in front of the intended receiver, Penniman. I think we might have a hold on the play on the back side here. Oh, roughing the passer. So that is big. Huge penalty right now. Given Kirk, now you're given personal foul, seven. roughing the passer on the defense. 15-yard penalty results in a first down. Oh, wow. Talk about giving life to your opponent. All the way out to almost the 45-yard line then. Take a look at it. Oh, they got big T and T on that one. And you know, you just got to pull off. I know, big man, you did a lot of hustle to get to the quarterback. They're going to protect them. Hand came down near the face mask. Black's going to come out every time at any level. 136 to play here in the first half. McBee and his offense trying to get something on the board before halftime. And he's going nowhere. Big Matt Berry. All state lineman up front, number 74. And also in there on the stop, a couple of other guys for Kirkwood, but it was Barry there first. And let's salute Matt Barry, a guy who's heading into the military after his senior year. And tell you what, what a job there on the backside. Nice job of everyone filling the gaps. Matt Barry gets in on a tackle. They're making sure they contain Stephen McPhee. Yeah, he's a captain on this team and good student. There. Over the middle, incomplete, intended for winners. And he would have had the first down had he brought that one in. Third big catch dropped again here in the first half. you got to be able to catch the ball. Give your quarterback some confidence. He's getting time. He delivers a strike. It's a first down on the play. Instead, now it's third and ten. And again, Fort Osage, I was talking about this. 
they're in some territory they really haven't been in. They're allowing six points Point. a game this season. Seven shutouts. Seven shutouts. And right now, Kirkwood has 17 points on the board. And Fort Osage has yet to score. One of seven on third down, and this is third and ten. And now running out of there is McBee, and he's got a first down to the 45. Mark it at the 44 of Kirkwood. Nice job there, and Stephen McBee on that design rollout. You have time showing the patience. Now, if he scrambles too soon, he gets tackled. Instead, he gets man coverage. Everybody turns their back. There's the crease in the middle. First down on the play. Gain of 12 by Steve McBee. First and 10, Fort Osage inside a minute to play. McBee rips a pass in there to Mosby, but he couldn't hang on. Exactly. In Benson. the coverage, Benson. Benson. Big man, you got to use your body, just, just like basketball. You get across, you got to shield people, you got to fight for the pigskin. Stephen McBee delivers a strike a little bit high, but you got to make that catch. It's right on the number. It's expecting you to come down with the ball. And normally he has this season. Yeah. Came in with 31 Everyone catches catches. for 500 yards and six touchdowns on this season. Devontae Mosby, 6'6", 220. Anything on the board right now for Fort Osage at the end of this half would be so helpful. McBee. Henneman was the intended receiver, and once again, Phillips right there with him. Again, he got hit just on the play. Was that Barry again in the backfield on the pressure? Also Goddard. Yeah, it was Goddard, number 15, coming off the edge that time, but it hits Penniman in the hand. Brings up a third down 10 with 42 seconds left. Stephen McBee's been very accurate tonight with his throws. Very accurate. Here going both rolling to his left and his right. Give your buddy some love, make the catch. Good protection. Going upstairs again. Intended receiver Winters, and he looked like he was clear by about a yard. Created and that separation. one just a little bit overthrown that time. Running the post, nice job of driving downfield vertically, then making the break, creating the separation this time. Watch Winters, again, getting time in the pocket. Again, nice job on the blitz pickup. There's the ball, and just a little bit too far for Winters that time. Had a step on Benson. Fourth down 10 from the 45 of Kirkwood. Three verticals, going up, up, Hail Mary. Going up, got him. he got him. Got his receiver, but it's incomplete. Uh, Had him at the goal line, it was Mosby. And was that Richie number three who came back on the strip? I thought he had him, he got cut. Watch Mosby getting deep on the vertical route, getting on top of the route. There's the throw. Getting to separation right through the hands of Mosby. That was right through the hands. Neil, come back to the football. Come back. Don't wait for it. Drive on the ball. So close. That flips it over with 27 seconds left for Kirkwood at their own 45-yard line. Nice job in the vertical route. Can't come away with the big play here. Bishop gives to Alton. And he is tackled by the feet by Mamou Tawiatusa. Mamou under tackle. I'll tell you, that's, that's a life-saving tackle here. Now Kirkwood with the ball on the 45-yard line. Timeout. Second and short. A couple plays. You think maybe you're right in field goal range. Tawiatusa, one of those guys that came in with about 100 tackles on the season. Also, Sia, he had about 100 tackles on the season, as well as Joseph Tumasave. We saw him in the first game against Liberty North. Remember him down there? <laughs> he was just attacking people. Bomarito Audi has the finest selection of Audis in the Midwest. See sales manager Joe Wolk or log on to bomaritoaudi.com for more info. Nice crowd on hand here. A lot of folks from Independence have made their way in the Kansas City area yes. to watch their Fort Osage team. And, of course, Kirkwood has turned out in full force in their backyard here in the Dome. Got a great crowd here in the Dome right now. And it's kind of an edgy crowd because it's been so close for Fort Osage for their fans. So many big plays, but yet haven't been able to cut the mustard. Kirkwood's made some big plays, and that's why we sit right now at 17 to 6 zip. But right now, defensively for Fort Osage, you've got to make a stop. Now you can't even give up the field goal right now. 
20 seconds left before halftime. Pioneers trying to come up with another score before they head to the locker room. Alton. And they got him stopped for a gain of about a yard or two. That Elo Elo on the tackle. Going in long. Actually, it was Tawai Tuwala. Tawai Tuwala. Nice job. He got him low. Elo Elo high, Tuwala low. They're going to go ahead and I think just let the clock run on this. Kirkwood 17 to nothing here at halftime in the Class 5 championship game. They really got it going. A couple of stops early on, but that yep. big 73-yard hit, Bishop to Benson, opened things up for the Pioneers. It did some blown coverage, and that was just because of the play-action fake, doing a nice job, and that's been the difference for this offense this year for Kirkwood. Jordan Bishop, again, throwing the ball nicely, but also, too, for a quarter stage's offense, they've got to begin to catch the ball. I've got five or six drops right now here in the first half. Let's go down to Corey. Hey guys, thanks. I'm here with head coach Matt Irvin from Kirkwood. Coach, very important, a big zero up on that side for Ford Osage. Talk about how your defense has played here in the first half. Well, they've been really great and uh, you know, we've been very fortunate on some plays. They've had some guys open and they just haven't connected. We're very grateful for that. Uh, we've got to do a little better job of containing that quarterback and he's very dangerous. We knew that going in, but uh, we're really, you know, feeling good about our position now. We know we've got 24 minutes to play. You've got a very good quarterback, a dangerous quarterback on your own, Jordan Bishop. How do you grade out his performance in the first half? Well, uh, first half's been good. We'll really know it's, it's complete grade. Right now he's halfway through the semester. He's got to do the rest of the work the next half. Absolutely. And then his brother, Jared Bishop, nice to see them hooking up on that play down in the end zone there. His play on defense, he's a very good leader for your team, isn't he? No question. Both those uh, young men are great football players so far for us, and I know they're going to help us lead us in the second half as well. Thank you, Coach. Best of luck in the second half. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks, Corey and Coach Irvin. And right now he's feeling pretty good with a 17 to nothing lead in the state championship game. Trying to finish up what they couldn't finish last year when Staley beat them in the state title game. We'll be back with our halftime show. You're watching Show Me Bowl 2012 on Fox Sports Midwest. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. The new maze record. Oh. Stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Boo! <laughs> hey, hey, where are you going? Can't get by me. I'm number one in this class. I rule this lab. I'm number one. Hey, hey, I don't think so. Yes! Weather! I am a king! Woo! You wouldn't do it there. Woo! So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk. Welcome back inside the Edward Jones Dome in downtown St. Louis, everybody. Corey Riggs and the crew here. Class 5 championship game and Kirkwood in control right now at halftime, leading Ford Osage 17 to nothing. We're down here on the field and we're now joined by Harvey Richards from the Missouri State High School Activities Association. First off, Harvey, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, same to you, Corey. It's great to be here, and it's great to be here for these fans and these players in this incredible facility. Talk about the partnership with the Rams and the city of St. Louis, and this is such a special weekend for everybody. Yeah, it's a great venue. Uh, kids get to come out here, be on the turf, get to be in the big house, and they're enjoying themselves. We started off today with the eight-man, two teams who hadn't been here before, and it was really enjoying to see them out here playing. Of course, we're going to finish tonight with Kirkwood, and uh, 
Fort Osage, and so looking forward to a great second half. Yeah, there have been great games all day, and I'm sure it will be the same tomorrow. Talk a little bit. I know there's people in the state that have had questions all year. There's a new playoff system. Everybody's sharpening their pencils, trying to figure out how to score it. How do you grade how it's worked this year? I think it worked really, really well. If you look at the 14 teams that made it here to the Dome, 12 of them were District 1s. They were seated number one, and the other two teams were seated number two. So that really shows that the points worked really well, and we've had some great games besides that. I know there's some other championships that just got finished, and you guys have made some announcements this year. One of the championships that's moving, leaving Springfield, Missouri, the southwest corner of the state, coming up here to St. Louis. Now there's going to be some baseball played here in St. Louis next year. That's right. We're going to play baseball right here in St. Louis over in St. Charles, and it's going to be a great venue to be at. It's where the Rascals play. Uh, we've been there quite a few times to see what their setup is, and we're really looking forward to six great days because we now have five classes. So we'll be here Monday through Saturday playing high school baseball. That's right, kind of an expanded coverage of baseball all of a sudden with that new bracket That's system. Right. Talk to me a little bit now about, well, I know we've got another state championship coming up not so in the not-so-distant future. After the first of the year, it'll be time to crown wrestling state champions around February? Yep, we'll have wrestling in February. Of course, then we'll turn right back around and we'll have uh, basketball. And both of those are right there in Columbia at the university. Great venue for one to come out there. If you haven't seen the state wrestling championship, you need to go to it. It's something else. I know. It's, a, it's one of those sports that doesn't get nearly enough coverage anymore because so many schools, colleges in the area don't carry it anymore, but wrestling truly is one of the special sports here in Missouri. It is. It, it's it's like massive chaos. Eight mats going on all at one time, and my, my assistant that helps me in this sport here, Greg Stahl, is in charge of wrestling, and it's a great venue and a great setup. I know Columbia is a great uh, sort of a, uh, point for us to jump off from. The basketball championships back at the Mizzou Arena again this year. That is fun for the players to get down on that court and uh, battle for a state title. Right, and once again this year uh, we've gone back to the traditional setup where classes 1, 2, and 3 will be the first weekend and class 4, or 5 will be the second weekend. So make sure everyone's checked their calendar and make sure they're there for the correct weekend. Yeah, well, it's always a good one. Harvey, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Always a great time to be in St. Louis. We will step aside. When we come back, we'll have more of halftime here at the Show Me Showdown 2012 from the Dome in St. Louis, right here on Fox Sports Midwest. Hey, great pro. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a hamburger. Like, oh, really you, you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around. That's why we present people with options to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. The new maze record. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Well, it's brought to you by Farmers Insurance. And by the Bomberito Automotive Group. And we are at halftime here in Class 5, the state championship game. Last game of the day, Kirkwood on top 17 to nothing here at half. And we said that, last game of the day. This is the nightcap. We had other action today, though. Let's go back earlier. The first game that we had on Fox Sports Midwest today here in the Show Me Bowl, Class 3 state championship goes to Maryville. Yeah, Derek Steens talked about his running, and how about Zeke Elliott, number two? I can't watch this enough times. I mean, look at this run. Talk about running in traffic, then getting onto the open field of speed, and then McMahon, I'll tell you, 34. Every bit of 4 5 40 on this young man. Only a sophomore, folks. You're going to see number 34 for a couple more years toting the rock. And then here, how about Steens not being denied at the goal line, getting it done. And then how about our man again? Here it is, folks. Zeke Ellis shuffles, cut back. Can't be denied on special teams or down in the red zone. Just trucking people. Zeke Elliott in for seven. 
Yeah, he was outstanding today in a losing cause. This finished it off. Jonathan Baker for the touchdown, 30 yards. Do we see him at Northwest next year? <laughs> Well, I know a happy coach after that ball game today, and Corey Riggs was with him. That's the winning coach, Matt Webb. We're here with first-year head coach of the Maryville Spoof Hounds, Matt Webb. And coach, first-year head coach, big state championship here today. It's, it's kind of, this coaching thing is easy, isn't it? I wish it was. I just feel uh, extremely blessed um, and fortunate to be able to coach a group of young men that put a, put a, a goal together at the beginning of the summer and we said we're not going to do anything except look past uh, one week at a time and um, that's what we've done all season long just feel extremely blessed and very fortunate let's talk about uh, the road you've traveled to get here a spoof hound all the way back to the early 90s you played in a state semifinal in 1992 graduated in 93 what does this win mean personally for you being somebody that has so many ties to this great program well, it's, it's a lot of pride. Um, you know, I was born and raised in Maryville, and, and um, to be able to be gone for so many years and come back and, and really realize who you talk a lot about, you know, Maryville is a unique place. You know, number one, you know, we're, we're the spoof hounds. It's the only one in the country, and, and um, we take a lot of pride in that. And, and it's also a place that um, I've always believed that Maryville's a place you got to want to get to. It's not somewhere you just pass through. And, and um, so I've always talked about, you know, Maryville is a, a awesome community. They they support their athletics, they support young people, and they support our schools, and, and we, we in turn to give back. And I uh, just feel an extreme amount of pride for um, the team cur we currently have and our seniors and everybody on the team, the coaches and the school in general, but also for everybody that's kind of an older spoof hound that can look back and say, hey, that's one of our own. And Maryville won it today, 35-22, Class 3 state champion. How about the Class 1 game today? How many points, Baldy, did you get to observe in this game? Well, I lost track about the middle of the first quarter, so I'll let you handle all of the record. But how about this guy, Tyler Fallon, running the football today? Absolutely dynamic. And then here is Hughes. There was a Hughes brother every time toting the rock here for Penny. And here's Fallon again on the inside now. Not going to be touched, showing the power and the speed. And then this man, Overstreet, in overdrive, in reverses, wherever he could be touching the rock. Just running over big people along the way. And then here he comes over street. The whole city, the whole school had him stop. Found a way to make another one of those explosive plays. Go ahead and read his average, what he did this afternoon. No, over street was incredible in the fourth quarter for Penny. Scoring time and time again. This, this time good. he hauled it in and went up top for the touchdown. And they ran away, Penny 60 to 34. They are state champions in class one over Valley Catholic. But hats off to this guy, Fowler now. Fowler now, I'll tell day. you. And the other one too, quarterback position, right? I mean, they're, yes, they're gonna talk about the run and right here. Drew Finch, a sophomore, absolutely under pressure, made all the throws to Overstreet today. And that's the reason why so many big chunk plays in the second half changed the game. This is the way you finish, though, at the end. Just power running, Neil, between the tackles. Me against you, I'm going to slug in the mouth. And Penny wins it 60-34 to today. That interception sealed it. And Jim Powers had a chance to talk with the winning coach, David Fairchild. Well, no, I tell you, it was exciting. People sure um, got their money's worth today out there, I think. Not much defense going on, but we played, played hard, both teams. Well, we didn't have thinking like that, but I mean, it was just two offenses that were getting it going out there today, and and uh, you know, it was just kind of a whirlwind of a game. You know, if you think about it, we finally got them stopped there. You know, with a couple minutes to go, and then uh, we're able to get behind them there. We thought we'd try to take one shot and see if we could get up two scores because we didn't want to, you know, give them the ball back with a five-point lead. They were great. You know, both those guys. Uh, you know, our quarterback played the last half of last year on a Class Two quarterfinal team. And Kellen, you know, uh, started the whole season last year. Uh, they're both really good players. Uh, Kellen has had a great day. And believe it or not, he didn't even make all conference in our league, which is kind of a crime, I think. But, uh, you know, he doesn't care about those kinds of things and really showed great today. Coach, what does this state championship, I know you guys won it in uh, class two a couple years ago, but what does it mean for the community of, of Hamilton to get this state championship in class one? Well, it means a lot. Our fans really support us, you know, and our players have worked hard, you know, winning three of them in four years is quite an achievement. And, and uh, so we're extremely, extremely proud of our kids. We're, we're proud of the fact that they, 
you know, they kept playing hard when they were down two touchdowns early in the game and didn't lose their poise and, and just kept, you know, chugging away out there. And uh, what a great ride for you guys, 15-0 and undefeated and most likely going to end up number one in the state. Yeah, well, I'd say so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> Coach seems pretty confident of that, huh? No, your state so. champion? <laughs> well, the way they came out, and he's exactly right. They maintained their poise. They could have turned over real quick. Look at this lineup tomorrow. We got the option at 11 o'clock in the morning. We'll have a few coffees, so we'll be ready to go. And then I finish up with Blue Springs and Francis Howe now. Coach Donahoe ready to come back and do some good things. Should be another fun day of action. Class 2, 4, and 6 tomorrow here on Fox Sports Midwest. Time show, Show Me Bowl 2012. Class 5 state championship game. Kirkwood on top here in our nightcap 17 to nothing. Show Me Bowl 2012 here at the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Neil Harwell and Richard Baldinger. How you feeling, man? Oh, we had to go without half the jackets time. tonight. I'll tell you what. I wasn't about to make you put a jacket on here at halftime. No, I'll dude. tell you what. It, it, I'm still in a tie. That's the record tonight. We've got to put that in the Misha record. You haven't right. even loosened it up yet. No, I haven't. I don't know what's wrong with me. There's, I don't know if I've ever had a suit on this long. But you know what? For the action I've seen in these three games, I'd do it every day if I had to. It's simply been phenomenal. No doubt. Off, not, not much defense, but it's all right. Offensively, though, both teams really getting it done. A lot of fun and action, and we had some action. Mainly for Kirkwood in the yeah, first half of this did. ball game, Baldy. As Fort Osage did not score a point, Kirkwood gets on the board with 17, and they really got it going with that to Benson for 73 yards. Yeah, they thought with play action they should do some things on the outside, and again, just blown coverage that time by Hightower looking in the backfield, and the man covered just let Benson go on the deep round. And again, just can't have those type of plays in the game if you want to stay on top. Kirkwood's speed to do good. And there are the Bishop brothers hooking up. Jordan to Jared for the touchdown. That made it 14 to nothing in the first half. And they finished it up with a field goal by Phillips. The left footer boots one through there and 17 to nothing the score. At halftime, what impressed you about Kirkwood in the first half? Well, first of all, Jordan Bishop, I think he's even improved his throwing motion from last year. And again, the play action pass, getting a lot of time in the pocket, delivering, been able to run some, but second quarter, Fort Osage started closing him down. The other side, Fort of Sage, that's got to start catching the football. I mean, Stephen McBee's been rolling out of the pocket. He's delivering the ball with accuracy. I told you last week against Ozark, I thought he did a nice job. I counted at least six, seven drops in the first half. You're not going to beat Kirkwood dropping the ball like that. So that's what you think in the second half is that's what they need to do is just start catching the football. They do start catching, but I'm going to say stay with the intermediate routes. Don't go with the deep vertical routes because what's happening is Kirkwood's able to get pressure on Stephen McBee. If you don't, he get rid of the ball at his hands quickly. You can move the ball methodically down the field. That's Kirkwood's offense off the field too. Well, this is a good Fort Osage team and we'll know they'll come out with a punch here in the second they half. Will. It's long for me and over with. That is right. Stay tuned here. Kirkwood on top at halftime, 17 to nothing in St. Louis. Show Me Bowl 2012 on Fox Sports Midwest. Thank you. Can I help you today? Uh, no, thanks. I'm just looking. Oh, this is cute. Ahem. <clears throat> So? <laughs> Too tight, Hacky! Yuck! You wouldn't oh, do no it there. Oh. So, don't do it here. It's up to you. Like they're the fashion police. <laughs> Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. 
don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. The new maze record. Oh. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Kirkwood back on the field to the cheers of their fans. The Pioneers on top 17 to nothing in the Class 5 state championship game in St. Let's go to the Bomberitos game summary and take a look at the first half. Really dominated by Kirkwood in total yardage, 224 to 77. They really got it going in the passing game with that big 73-yard hit from Bishop to Benson. That got them rolling 7 to nothing. Another touchdown pass from Bishop to Bishop, made it 14 to nothing. They've also been able to run the ball effectively with 89 yards in the first half. Fort Osage has an effective running game on the season. 200 yards they average per game on the year, but only 15 yards rushing the football in the first half for Fort Osage. Oh. Half, Stephen McBee throws for 62 yards, but only 77 total. When they got in the red zone, Kirkwood able to punch it in. And that's why they lead it 17 to nothing. We'll take another break here at halftime. You're watching Show Me Bowl 2012, Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Back right after this. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around. That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. The new yeah, we don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. The 2012 Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Kirkwood on top 17 to nothing. Let's go down to Corey Riggs. Hey, thanks, Neil. We had a chance to talk to head coach Ryan Sharks from Ford Osage about what sort of changes he was going to make here in the second half. He said offensively they need to do one thing, and I know you guys have talked about it here during the halftime show. They need to catch the ball. Too many drops, too many balls hit in the hands for them to walk away. They left at least 14 points out on the field in the first half. On the other side of the ball, he's happy. He said huge, huge strides were made in defensive play between the first quarter and the second quarter. He says if they keep playing defense like they did in the second quarter, they can get back in this ball game. All right, thanks, Corey. Corey Riggs doing a nice job on the sideline for us all day in our games. And Ryan Schartz obviously knows what he's talking about as they have really turned this Fort Osage program around. And he's got the guys to get it done. They really gathered up those seniors. It looked like they gathered around Mamu. Mamu Toya Tusa down there. And he just kind of led to cheers. There's Mamu right there. And also in your picture was Joseph. And those guys were really kind of rallying their guys and getting ready to go here in the second half. I thought they did a better job after the couple big plays in the first quarter. Better job in terms of keeping um, on the negative side of things, keeping Kirkwood in the third and the long situations. Then they were able to play, come with some pressure in terms of on the quarterback, Jordan Bishop. So here in the second half, it's simple. Ball hits you in the hands. You're either going to take it in the end zone for Pater, or you're going to go home with empty hands and no trophy. And Matt, who's an outstanding 
lineman in his own right, an offensive lineman at Missouri State. He was All-American in 1992, and you can see some of that has rubbed off on his guys up front. Playing well up front, giving Jordan Bishop a lot of time. That play-action pass has really helped to take the pressure off Jordan Bishop and allows, again, it makes forces that defense. And you can see if Alton was completely healthy, you know, in that ankle. Doesn't quite have the quickness, but if he's healthy, that's what makes that the offense so dynamic. But here right now, let's see, got to have a big stop by Fordo Sage. Get that ball back to your offense. So Kirkwood deferred when they won the toss, and they'll get the ball. That defense of Coach Sharks will have to come out with some authority here in the second half, get things going the right way. They've counted on them all season long. We talked about they've only given up six points, points. a game on the season and seven shutouts along the way. This one picked up by Harris, and he reverses his field. And then tackled at the 37-yard line, tackled by Winters. Yep, same. And in that first half, Jordan Bishop, seven rushes for 36 yards. So overall, pretty good job. Remember, when talking with Coach Schartz, he said they did a lot of open field tackling, make sure they rallied around, got the people to where they need to be. Grab on, don't try to make the big hit, but just contain him. They did, let's see what they do here in the series. Starting the second half, gotta change the dynamics. This is where it happens right now. Mark him down at the 38-yard line, first and 10 for Kirkwood. Leading 17 to nothing. Alton Coming going nowhere. Up Blowing here. that thing up was Darby Reigns. And how about Joseph? Tume, Joseph Tumasabi, watch him come off the edge. Number 35, he also gets in on the play. And also, too, Titus Tyler, number 42. But it was Reigns with that yeah. initial hit. And he just blew that play up from the beginning. That is no gain. Second down and 10 for Kirkwood. Yeah, looks like that's what they're doing. They're walking those safeties up now on that line of scrimmage, letting them get involved in that running attack immediately. And 35, the free safety is Joseph Tumasave. Bishop to throw it. And over oh, the top him him. of his brother, Jared. No, that's actually yeah. out of the backfield, Edward Richie, Richie that time. Ball tie. That time, Jordan Bishop felt the pressure that time coming off the edges. Threw the ball a little bit too soon, changed the launch point, ball sailed on him. He had Richie open in the flats. Now, so we talked about it. now you got him in third and long. And this is what one of the keys. Coach Shark said, we gotta keep them in third and long, we'll have success. Three of eight on third down tonight for Kirkwood. This one is third and long, third and ten from the 38. Like to bring in something here, Sean Blitz and you're going to have movement in the offensive line. I think they're going to get Young the right tackle, 68. Loud down on the field in the dome. Sound starts bouncing all over. Got to make the boys. Full start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Well, the folks from Independence in the Kansas City area are making some noise right now for their defense, and they're feeling it out there. Yeah, they are. And again, I talked about that. First, when you come out at halftime, those adjustments, you got to bring the momentum with you right here defensively in this series. Florida Sage doing it. Third down 15 for the Pioneers. Bishop in and out of the hands of Benson. Nice coverage by Koida Ejir. Koida Ejir, we've been calling his name all night. Great job of going up. Man coverage on the outside. Jordan Bishop launches it. Throws just a little bit underthrown that time for his receiver, M.C. Smith. No, that's no, Benson. Benson. Benson going and up for that one. Excuse me. But if that ball's thrown over the top, that's a touchdown. Kirkwood to punt it away. Kicks at 33 and 32 today for their punter, Brendan Doyle. And he rugby style. And, and it didn't go too far. At the 44 yard line of Fort Osage, a little momentum turned in by the defense here. Three and out. Let's go down to Corey. 
Hey guys, the defense, the sideline, the fans right now are all going nuts. This is a squad that pitched seven shutouts during the season. Only three times did they ever let an opponent get into double digits, and one of those was their sole loss to the last year's state champ, Staley. Maybe a shutout here in the second half can bring them back into this Class 5 tilt. Well, yeah, good point. Defense all season long. Nice coverage by Kirkwood, but it draws a flag. The intended receiver winners, and in the coverage, Edward Ritchie, but a little too tight on the coverage. It was. Jordan Brown came on the blitz, too, and he altered the throw. 23. Should have been a good defensive play. Instead, you have interference on the play. Bringing that corner blitz now to try to keep that quarterback contained. That's interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. That brings the ball down to the 36-yard line of Kirkwood after the 15-yard penalty. And they just covered because they felt like the cornerback for Kirkwood on the outside couldn't really maintain proper leverage and thought the receivers could get separation. They did. Porto saves. Couldn't hold on to the ball here. Again, immediately attacking on the outside. Vauifi is the back along with McBee in the backfield. And he gets the Hold football. It. And a gain of about five. Yeah, a little power over that play. Pulling left guard around. Vauifi trying to dance a little bit. Gets some yardage. Nice tackle that time by Kirkwood. Limits the game. Well, Vauifi is an all. He injured his knee last season. In fact, he tore his ACL. Hasn't totally made it back from that, but he is out there, a tough guy. He's got the ball again, and just pounding people. He will not go down. Look at that. Have mercy! Inside the 20 to the 18 on an inspired run by Ezra Vauifi. Following left guard number 63 going around. Caleb Smith on the power roll. Vauifi, look at this. Get to the second level. And look at that one person miss. Second. I know he's got the whole city of Kirkwood. And he's just driving and going, bringing his feet in field. That is about a tough of a 14-yard run as you'll ever see. McBee. Runs it down to the 16-yard line, a gain of two on first end. Neil, I don't know if we've ever seen three games back-to-back -back with running that's been displayed here today. I mean, it's been sensational here. And right now, they decide they've got to go back to the running game and establish it. They've been able to do it all year, set the tempo, coming out the second half, playing the game physically now up front. Fawifi back there again. Another guy leading the charge is Tapasoa, you talked about him. They've been running behind him a little bit. Whistle on the play. And this one will go against Forno Sage. So that'll set up second down, 13. You get a penalty down in the red zone, Neil. You got to magnify it twice. It's so costly. It's so, it's so tough to get down here. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Second down, 14 from the 21. And that was their deepest penetration of the ball game. Was so that far. And so McBee brings his team to that pistol formation with Ezra Vauifi back there. That Play action. Out. Up top goes McBee. And incomplete. A couple of receivers wow, back there. Penniman and also Mosby. Phillips back there in the coverage, coverage. and also Richie for the Pioneers. And I'll tell you what, Stephen McBee, he has stood in there. He knows he's going to take a shot from Goddard, but still keeps his eyes downfield. And his receiver just tripped. He just, he just tripped on that. Penniman just, uh, the turf monster got him. Yeah, and this, again, that's talked about that, playing on the turf from natural grass. It's hard. Third down, 14 for Fort Osage. McBee, wow, scrambles out of the pocket. What down a to change. the 13-yard line, but it'll bring up fourth down. But against Stephen McBee, it looks like a loss. You talk about looking like he's closed in the clutch, clutches of Kirkwood's defense. And again, look at the change of direction going against number four, Jared Bishop, who has the spy on that. Well, they've had him bottled yeah. up today. But this is one. a guy that's run for 1,400 yards this season and thrown for 1,900. And they're going for it, Neil. 
They're going for it. Fourth down, six from the 13 of Kirkwood. Up under center and a whistle. Now, if there's a penalty, you're going to have to go ahead and kick the field goal, I would think. No, it looks, it looks like it was timeout Kirkwood. It was timeout Kirkwood. And we'll take timeout. Fourth down six upcoming for Fort Osage from the 13 of Kirkwood. Back right after this. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a ham. Like, I don't really ah, well, You wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Fort Osage at the 13 of Kirkwood. Fourth down six for the Indians. Their deepest penetration of the ball game. Two tight ends. McBee will run it. What a block on the outside. And he's short. He is short. I thought Bowie got the block that opened it. But was that Barry on the tackle? He goes to the right side behind Bowie, but couldn't get it done. Again, we were talking about, I think you take the points, don't you, Neil? On that side, let's see what Barry does. But look at the block by Bowie, and that is, that's Barry coming over in on the tackle. Also, Goddard number 15. Well, I mean, take the points. It's not always an automatic in high school football. They no. have a good kicker and bomb bomb guard. Guard. Now, I think you take the three. I don't know. I mean, you're trying to capture that momentum back. You get in the red zone. I think you come away empty-handed. Let's see what happens. Well, you've also got that solid defense. They've got him pinned back, and they've got Jordan Bishop. That's a loss on the play. Nice job on that time reading the zone read that time. Elo Elo again. Keeping his eyes on the quarterback. So important in this defense. See how he stays up the field? He's got quarterback. He doesn't look at the pulling guard. He doesn't look at the back coming out of the backfield. Watch him. Look how he doesn't bother with the fake. He's got quarterback. That's taking care of your responsibility. No play. Elo Elo and also Tawala. In there on the stop, but it was Elo Elo that got their first loss of one on the play. Back to the eight-yard line. Here's the pick. Bishop. Over the middle, got his receiver, he is drilled. And separated from the ball. Darby Reigns. Antonio No, West. actually, it was Sia, Sia. Samson Sia. Watch Samson here just separate the receiver from the ball. There's the play action, over the middle, coming down. No chance to put the ball away. You know why your receiver's looking at what's coming to hit him, and it's a freight train. The pigskin comes away from his body. One of the guys that Coach Sharks called the heart and soul of the defense, Samson Sia, with a big hit there. Third down 11 from the eight yard line for Kirkwood. Nothing over the top. Cover two here. Safeties are deep. Bishop. And, they and he is stopped at the 16 yard line. He'll be short of the first down, and Kirkwood will punt it. Really, this defense has stepped up here in the second half. This is the second time, three and out. 
Here Neil uh, doing a better job in terms of on that zone read, staying through responsibility, stopping the run. Then coverage bound side, safety staying back now in that cover two. Nowhere to go with the ball. Jordan Bishop then they're rallying to tackle him in the open field. And that Fort Osage defense has come out hitting here Ooh, in the second ever. half. And Much this is better. one of the reasons why you might go for it on that last play down in the red zone. Because you Almost flip the field here a little bit. A little bit. And they're going to have great field position okay, at yeah. the 35-yard line of Kirkwood. You're exactly right. You get the ball at the 35. So. <laughs> Take another go at it with a fresh set of downs. Are you saving as much as you could on your insurance? See how your knowledgeable local farmer's agent can save you money. Call 1-800-FARMERS or visit farmers.com. We are insurance. We are farmers. Yeah, last two punts, 18 and 19 yards right now. I think you might want to just put the ball in Jordan Bishop's hands and tell him to run. <laughs> Good point. Man coverage here, trips receivers to the left. Safety back, look who goes to that inside receiver. Linebackers are tight, might have that inside route. Pressure. And McBee will not escape it. Taken down by Goddard. And I'll tell you what, putting the pressure on that one, Antonio Leachman, number 54, in the trenches. Take a look at him. He's just working off the right side. And again, I'm, I'm not sure the protection on that one. He had blocking him. Austin McDowell, but the left tackle just set up like the quarterback would stay in the pocket, but say Stephen McBee rolled out right into the pressure. So again, miscommunication by the big man up front. And a loss of eight on the play, back to the 43. Second down, 18 for Fort Osage. McBee over the middle, got his receiver. Mosby hauls it in this time, and he's down to the 25-yard line. The truck just rambling across the field on that crossing route. Stephen McBee again holding on to that ball, waiting for those routes to develop. He knows he's going to get hit, still delivers a strike, and Mosby just rumbling and stumbling down. That's what you want to see out of your big tight end. And that is a first down on a gain of 18. And that dude is a weapon. Oh, Devontae Mosby, Mosby with that kind of speed and didn't have the greatest first half of a couple of drops, but he is a big time weapon for this team. That's Outstanding basketball player for Fort Counter. Osage. There goes McBee ahead for about three yards. They closed that down quickly. Antonio Leachman, Leachman yeah, number 54. I like the way he plays, man. He comes with an attitude. You can't move him off the line of scrimmage. Really good hand. That's him, 54. Man, in the middle. Him and Spiller. Ah, I'll tell you, nice job that time. Because that looked like on that counterplay, Stephen McBee was going to run, but it closed quickly. Matt Berry, another guy that's been in on the action up front on the defensive line today for Stemming Kirkwood. For McBee lets it rip over the middle. And Mosby at the goal line. And it's incomplete. And I thought on that play, if he could have hung a little bit long, Brandon Winters would take a look at Mosby. Again, great effort. Ball just comes off the fingertips. And on the coverage, is that Richie number three? Also, J.J. Jones Winters. was back there. Those two. I thought Brandon Winters also, though, was open too. Third down conversions. Third and nine, so another third and long situation for Fort Osage. McBee. It's caught by Jesse McBee. First down inside the 10 to the 7. Do we have offensive interference or something? There's a flag yeah, on the play. There's a flag at the 20 yard line. And Richie looks like he's got a cramp. I thought he came away with the pick. But how about Stephen McBee throwing a laser that time to his receiver on the outside? And his brother wow. Jesse McBee somehow held on to that thing. Jesse McBee makes the catch on the deep out that time. And it looks like Richie's got a cramp. Oh, this will be a hold on the defense. Wow, that's a Stephen McBee on the rollout. Let's take a look at it again, Neil. Watch the design rollout again. The protection's where you need good throwing lane. And how about oh. that tight window? But Neil, again, why is the completion made? Can we freeze it, guys? Freeze once the catch is made. Look how the arms are extended. Now you've got the pigskin. Great play by Jesse McBee from Stephen McBee. You got to love the McBee family. Man, how did that one get through Richie? Fordo Saints next mayor. Which one, Jesse or Stephen <laughs> McBee? 
Well, this time it's Stephen McBee, but he is run down from behind by that guy again, and Antonio Leachman. Wow, I'll tell you what, Antonio Leachman has played a game. Again, what's the change of direction, but Antonio Leachman knows he's got to make the tackle. Again, working from the right defensive end, and again, it was Barry, though. Yeah, he got fed him right. right to him. Again, kept him from getting to that edge because of the penetration. Great job up front by the Kirkwood defensive front. McBee Pressure. Wow. scrambles out of there, looks into the end zone, incomplete, looking for uh, Penniman. Do we have a late hit? And Harris was back there in the coverage. Do we have a late hit on this play? Personal foul. Rough in the pass. That's it. Stephen McBee, I'll tell you what, you talk about a guy that will never quit. You want to know what it means to play quarterback, folks, at any level? Stephen McBee's answering that question right now. He's down in the red zone, heart and soul right now, going to make plays for you. Now he is a tough, tough kid. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. Automatic first down. Now the Kirkwood fans don't like it. Yeah, design rollout again. Nowhere to go. Feels the pressure from who else? But oh, from behind. It, yeah. It's Goddard that Goddard. came in. But I'm not. Wow, well, that's tough call. Tough call. The give is to Vauifi. And he's down to the two-yard line. I think Stephen McBee goes bear hunting without a bow or a rifle. You think? Well, they say he loves it. it his dad and his brother Jesse, I mean, that's that's what they like to do, man. <laughs> Got a farm and that deer doesn't stand a chance the way he's throwing the football. <laughs> Cowie again. Kick out. Touchdown, Fort Osage. Caleb Smith, 63, give him credit. He pulls and he's got the kick out block. Bowie on the run. With 3.57 left in the third quarter. Again, Caleb Smith on the kick out. Also, too, nice job of finishing the block inside on that one from the tar tackle. Wow. Tough run. Baumgartner on to try the extra point. Is that Jacob Early, I think, on the block? Sure, we'll take a look at that again. Baumgartner. Now 36 of 39 on this season on PATs. We'll take a break. Forno Sage with some heart here in the third quarter. On the comeback, Fawifi piling into the end zone. 17 to seven, Kirkwood. Thank you. Can I help you today? Uh, no thanks, I'm just looking. Oh, this is cute. So? You wouldn't do it there. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Like they're the fashion police. <laughs> Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. That's a new maze record. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Boo! <laughs> hey, hey, where are you going? Can't get by me. I'm number one in this class. I rule this lab. I'm number one. Hey, hey, I don't think so. Yes! Weather! I am a king! Woo! You wouldn't do it there. Woo! So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk. That are colder in the city here tonight, Baldy. The wind, the nor'easter. Did it come in here or what? Yeah, no, the it Hulk didn't. came it's in here and got it, a little cold on us. It heated up here inside the dome but it nicely. it sure did that, didn't it? We had some great action here. Florida Sage gets some points on the board. The crowd was great for them. Can Kirkwood come back and match the punch for punch right now? 
And their crowd's been good, too. Kirkwood. Yeah, they have been. And Kirkwood's been tough on defense. But again, Stephen McVie doing some special things here. And guess what, Neil? When you catch the football, good things happen. <laughs> yeah, that was a big play. I'll tell you some other things that were big for Fort Osage in my mind in the third quarter. That the way the defense came out took charge. Exactly. That's one. The other thing is Vauifi. Yeah. He got a couple of runs that just told everybody, we are here to play a hey, ball game. game here in the third quarter. We are not going quietly into this night. And Vauifi on a 14-yard run where the whole team piled on him from Kirkwood and could not bring him down. And that just kind of set the tone. And here's another tone that's being set in the person of Titus Tyler coming up and laying the wood. Yeah, he did. Yeah, just go back here. It's just a simple counter play. Caleb Smith, Bryce Palmer, the tackle, 54 pulling. Watch Palmer finish. Get around the corner, sustain the block. There's the hole, and then Valifi's not going to be denied there. But again, good patience. Let those blocks develop. Let the big guys get it done. You get in the end zone. Fun time for Porto Save. Ryan Sharks relying on that defense. Got the field position after the 19-yard punt. There you go. And they went for it on fourth down, and they did cash it in. Got the seven points. 17 to seven, Pioneers on top. Bishop has his receiver, Harris. And Ejir is there with some help from his Fort Osage teammates to bring him down. Let's go down to Corey. Hey guys, it's getting exciting down here. And when we talked to Coach Ryan Schartz earlier this week, we found out he may be rewriting the way you uh, rebuild a program. The first year he was at Fort Osage, they uh, ha did not have a good record. They were one and nine, but he kept working. They brought in a whole new coaching staff. They got a buy-in from the administration. He knew there were players walking the halls that could play football, and he went out and found them. He went to the two platoon system, and then back in 2006, they turned the corner with an eight and two record. And he said it, that'll be the most special season he ever has because that was the year kids at Fort Osage started wearing their letterman's jackets again because they were proud of the Indian football team that was on the field. Thanks, Corey. And that, that's always a sign when you start wearing the colors and the leather jackets and all those things. And he is absolutely, him and his staff and the community and the players have turned this program around. And the flag on the play, Baldy, what I, is it a hold against? It is a hold. Okay. But when you look at Coach Sharks, do you see a little bit of John Gruden? <laughs> Chucky Monster on the sideline. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. Now, I wouldn't have thought of that, but uh, <laughs> I'll let you answer to him later on that one. <laughs> it's a compliment. Hey, I'll tell you what, he brings an energy to I'll the game. I'll tell Coach Schartz, I, I haven't seen that look on him yet. Oh, but, uh, okay. He's just as intense. Oh, he is. Way. A graduate of Northwest Missouri State who will play in the national playoffs tomorrow. And they and this was incomplete. Throw. Again, the pressure right now. Jordan Bishop really uncomfortable in the pocket. Designed short roll out that time, pulling the string, not setting his feet in the ball. As you can see, he tapped himself. Take a look at it. Here comes the pressure off the side. Is that Tuma Sabe, number 33? Yep. And again, there's the pressure. And again, quarterback can't step into the throw, short arms it. Now you're third and long again. Yeah, Clyde Benson was out there. Third down, 12. Three of 10 now on third down for Cookwood. See what Elo Elo does here. He's at that right defensive end right now. Green Dog on the blitz. Here comes the heat from Fort Osage, oh. and Tyler makes the tackle at the 21. But initially on that blitz, that was Jonah Tumasave, number 41. Watch him come through late. Look how he Green Dogs gets outside, keeps Bishop bottled up. And now your buddy's come and rally. Was and Tyler on him in a heartbeat? Wow, did they close the distance on that one. Titus Tyler, 5'10", 165 junior, out there playing linebacker. The last two punts have gone 18 and 19, respectively, for Kirkwood. And Fort Osage has ended up with great field position. That one almost blocked by Tyler. And it goes out of bounds on the Kirkwood side of the field at the 49-yard line. 
Bomberitos is the number one automotive group in Missouri for the third year in a row, outselling everyone in the entire state, and was named 51st largest automotive group in the country. Bomberitos Automotive, a proud sponsor of high school athletics and of the Show Me Bowl here in St. Louis. I'll tell you what, one of the other aspects we're going to talk about in the second half is this punting by Kirkwood. Base has been down and out on those rugby points. First and 10 at the 49-yard line of Kirkwood. First and 10 for Fort Osage. Stephen McBee, how about Tapasola getting a chance? Yes. And he goes for a around. couple of yards, and Matt Goddard. Barry up front. Actually, that was Taylor. TNT. Trefenu Taylor, 75, 6'3", 280, the senior. Reads it, comes off the block. They're going to go, they're going to go ahead. They were supposed to option him, but again, some miscommunication that time. You can't miss 75. Man, that's like hitting a wall. He can't make it underneath the arch. I mean, Tapasoa is 210, 5'8", 210. He got a yard on the play they give him. Second down now. McBee to throw it. Looking for winners. Got his receiver. Well, oh, he's in and out of his hands. Over there in the coverage, he was on him tightly. Andrew Wilson. Andrew Wilson, nice job of reaching around with that left hand to knock the ball away. Ball again thrown with accuracy, velocity on the out route where you got to lead your receiver there to the, to the sidelines or else it's going to get picked. But Wilson gets that left hand and deflects it, knocks it away. 3 of 11 on third down for Fort Osage. Third down nine. McBee going upstairs. And double covered is Penniman down yep. the field. Richie and also Phillips. Underneath. Penniman no chance, but Richie right on that route over top. Not allowing Penniman, but also squeezing him down on the left side along the sidelines. Not allowing any chance for a completion to take place. Looked like he might have had an open receiver run in the post. And well, once again, the safety coming over to the it's, near sideline. It's tough, though. you got to remember, you're rolling your quarterback yeah, hard out to throw now back that way. across your body. But it's when you're under duress, you're rolling to that side of the field, you're giving your receiver usually a high, low read. You're not looking back towards the middle. So we see it from up there, but the quarterback yeah, tough Yeah, easy for, for me to look at up here. <laughs> 117 left third quarter. McBee punts it away. Nobody back for Kirkwood. And this one bounds into the end zone. So it'll come out to the 20 for the Pioneers. I'll tell you what, defensively here, since the start of the second half, it's been lights out. Fort Osage, Kirkwood, got to find a way to get that ball back on the edge. Well, guys Club like been tough. Joseph Tumasave right there in the screen, 35. And company have really gotten it going on the defensive side. Bringing the hair with them. Fort Osage team. Well, as we get older, we're respectful of any guy with that, that amount of hair. First and 10 at the 20 for Kirkwood. Up top goes Got Bishop him. looking down the field oh. for Benson. Had him open. And just a little too strong for him and toward the sideline. He beat Darby Reigns on that Benson that got over the top. Paul just overthrown that time. That guy's a tough cover. Oh, he is. He's got some burst to him. I mean, the guy going to Iowa is Harris, Andre Harris, 21. But Benson is dangerous. Oh, he is dangerous. 5'9", 165 pounds, 4'5", 40. He's every bit of it there. He showed you some good speed on the field on that go route. Second down, 10 Blitz for off the edge. Oh, I missed the tackle. That's it. And Jordan on the Bishop. read, here comes Jordan Bishop. He's got a first down for the Pioneers. 16-yard gain for Jordan Bishop. They had this called up perfect with the blitz off the edge by Hightower to the corner. You've got quarterback. you got to break down. You miss us, and this is what Jordan Bishop will do to you. Great job by him, and I, we have a flag on the play here. No, but again, Hightower's in position. Got to make the tackle. Don't lunge. Break down. Grab onto that jersey. Let your buddies help you out. Nice ball control by Jordan Bishop, running yep. after he did it, and he got a nice block on the edge from Antonio Weston, the wide receiver. They said their receivers have really improved their blocking this season. Coach Irvin said that. Yeah. And Richie is taken down 
A secure tackle by Ejir, Koida Ejir. Koida Ejir, I'll tell you what, been tackling in the open field all night long against Benson. He makes that tackle. If he doesn't, guess what? He's going down the sideline. So that cover two, that safety wasn't over on his side. Again, able to make the play. Koida is just a junior, 5'10 and 175. And you're right, Baldy. We've been calling his name all night long. Brings up second down five from the 41 of Kirkwood. Neither of these teams, as we approach the fourth quarter, that's the end of the third quarter, neither of these teams have ever won a state championship. A quarter to play here in St. Louis. You're watching Fox Sports Midwest. Show Me Bowl 2012 is brought to you by Farmers Insurance and by the Bomberito Autumn. One quarter to play. We've had a day of football, Stone. Show Me Bowl 2012. This is class five. It's 17 to seven Kirkwood. Second down five as we begin the fourth quarter. Bishop shakes a tackle, but not the second one. Comes up and lays the hit on him. 6'1", 185, the senior, Deontay Hightower. Elo, Elo's the first man here on the option. He's got quarterbacks, misses him here on that. You know, great job by Hightower, but Jordan Bishop's got to read that. He can't cut back inside. Goes down the field. You got man on the outside, man coverage. It's a big run. Or read that time by the quarterback, Jordan Bishop, on the option. Third down tower. 42-yard line of Kirkwood. They lead it by 10. Double Bishop move. on the pump fake. Rain. Now going up top. And nearly it rains. And also over there to make a stop, Tumasave, Joseph Tumasave. It rains on the hold against the double move. I think he might have got his hands on the receiver that time. Against Benson. Do they get uh, rains on the ground? Now that is a tough cover on Benson. Yep, a little double move that time. Quarterback with the pump, pumps on the short route. Let's go, D. Holding on the defense. Hey. Ten yard penalty. Uh, good coverage so far, but again, nice move on the outside by Benson. That's the quickness of his. Again, quarterback gets time. Yeah, he had time to do to take place. place. Matt Irvin looking on, trying to get his team to the finish line here. This is Alton making a move and coming to the near sideline. He's got a first down to the 35. But Joseph Tumasave, he makes this tackle. Little zone read, but watch everybody go. Here comes back. Little trap with the guard coming back. And Young, excuse me, to tackle. So some misdirection. Alton follows his tackle. Back inside. Again, work against him. First down the play. That's a gain of 14 by Alton. The all-time leading rusher in Kirkwood history. On one way at the line, bring your tackle back the other way in the trap. Worked nice. 
On first down, Bishop will run it. Tackled after a gain of eight. Again, nice job by Bishop. Oh, Seeing he doesn't have anything downfield. Watch the shake. In the open field, folks. I'm here just a little bit. There's a little stutter. The shake and gone. I'll tell you what, he looks like he's going down the lane every time. Ready to make the tackle. Make it second and short. Seventh play of this drive that started at their own 20. And how big was that penalty on the outside? Can take and that was on third down. Yes, sir. Second down two. And close to short, though. Jared Bishop gets a carry this time. In the little zone read that time. Some penetration inside. Kobe Vandeman that time. Jared Bishop, the twin brother of Jordan Bishop. Jared a little bigger at 200 pounds. They're both 6'1", twin brothers. And Jared so big on defense, but he came in. He had run for 235 yards on this season. Pretty stout up front, folks, too, in this defense. 3-5-3. Three, three. Those guys, Nathan Elo. Elo, Elo doing a nice job. Holding the pressure this time. Kirkwood 3 of 11 on third down, and Bishop Trying to be close. is short. I don't know if he got it, Neil. I think he's short. I think he is, too. But who closed it very late there coming in? Was that Vaifi? I think it was Vaifi off the pack. And he came up really low and closed the door. I mean, he slammed it. There he on is. Jordan Bishop. They're going to make Vaifi, 5'9", 195, the junior. Signed quarterback draw. Again, Matt Berry pulls, comes back and he's in on the tackle. I'm going to tell you, about I'm not sure, Neil, if that ball got across. Like I said before, Baldy, I think he's short, but I got a cataract up here. Be right a lot. What's the deal? <laughs> I'll leave you in your own world, young <laughs> Thank man. You, I'll man. leave you. Thank you. And denying people. Well, I'll tell you what, when Val Ify hits somebody, you know it's going to be short every time. They're going to be a couple inches short. Fourth down and short. And the former offensive lineman, Matt Irvin, in his third season, hopes his big fellas can crunch out a... Alton oh, shakes right. a tackle and picks it. up the first down. Stopped by Valifi. The pressure on that time. Tuala, Tuala, number 94, was in the backfield. And it looked like it got stopped. Watch the pitch. At that time, Jordan Bishop won the pull on that. But again... Couldn't get it done, and Alden was able to make it again to that time. Yeah, Tawai'i Tawula. TNT. Taylor. Tawala, I should say. Tawai'i Tawala is the guy that pushed him out. But Taylor that time, the, that time. That's the movement up front. First and 10, Kirkwood. Ball marked at the 24 yard line of Fort O'Sage. Oh, Alton on the far sideline, making people miss. Bringing him down his Probably range, range, but he got a nine yard gain on that play. Tell you what, nice what Alton gives you. Inside, outside. Watch Barry get around just enough. And because of Alton's ability, just kind of dance going sideways. Most backs usually you shut him down, but he's got that ability just to jackrabbit speed. Almost the first down on the play. 8.01 left, 17 to seven, Kirkwood. They're driving in the red zone now, Fort Osage. Second and short. Downer. And hole up the middle and cutting through there, James Willis. Daniel Smith at the center position, it's a nice block. They get a counter pulling left guard, left tackle, and Barry, and there's the crease coming back inside. But the reason why that's open, linebacker at the top, also, they're looking at Jordan Bishop, and that's what a mobile quarterback gives you in this offense. Makes the linebackers freeze. Nice job on the counter play. Alton Reed. Run there by James Willis. Excuse me, Willis. Excuse me. 5'9", 180, the junior. First down, and the give is to Alton. And Fort Osage, tough up front this time. And my big man, Taylor. 75, just pulling around. Watch the big guard get around. Joe, that action. And Joseph Tumasabe just coming up and ripping at human body parts on that tackle. <laughs> He's getting after it. Bringing an attitude. He's a senior. Tumasabe. Hey, you're never going to make a stop. This is it right here. Here's your game. 
This drive started with 1.10 left in the third quarter. They have taken a lot of time off. 6.35 left. Touchdown, Kirkwood! Richie. Good time by Jordan Bishop. Standing in the pocket, Neal. Let the route develop. Richie creates the separation. And look at the ball right to the outlet play. Nice job by Jordan Bishop on that drive. Getting the running game going in the throw. Pass for Jordan Bishop to three different receivers. They got it done there. I'll tell you what, that was really good patience on his part. Proud really showed a lot of poise, made some plays, and again, go all the way back to the penalty that on the was, outside. That was huge. And Phillips on. Has it right through there. And Kirkwood on top 24 to 7 here in the dome. Yeah, protection looked good up front. Young at the right full down. And that allows Jordan Bishop to get outside. And again, Richie just coming across the end zone. Again, traffic. Nice job not getting caught up. Joseph Tumasabe, no chance. But a nice job by Richie finding the hole. Jordan Bishop delivering the ball. Three to Bishop. 24 to 7, Kirkwood. Agents, when it comes to That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. His records. Oh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. Farmers agent in your community. Call 888-96-FARMERS. Kirkwood a little tough to watch right now for Fort Osage with six and a half to play. Still time left. There's just times. It can be tough. And you had the drops in the first half, couldn't put points on the board, trying to come back. But on that drive, what did Kirkwood do? They got the running game going. 11 rushes, they drive, 80 yards. 11 of them were running. Big guys up front. Big ugly started moving some people off the ball, Mark. Yep, ran it all with a pass. Counter play, the power O, the zone read. Jordan Bishop is now thrown to Clyde Benson, his brother Jared Bishop, and that last one thrown to Edward Ritchie. And someone special teams. Stephen McBee. Across the 40 to the 42. Let's go! You got to go a hurry up offense now. I'll get up to the line of scrimmage. Well, they don't huddle anyway, so. Yeah, you got to make it happen. Well, if he, one of the guys in the state that you'd want to lead drives toward the end of the ball game when you got to come back, it would be that guy, Stephen McBee. This is offense out there right now at the 42-yard line, first and 10. And McBee looking to the near sideline for. Couldn't quite get it done that time on the throw. The ball came out a little bit awkward on that. I don't know if passes right now, Neil. I think you're going to have to throw down vertically. You're going to have to gain chunks. You just don't have the time right now. Glad to give up those short routes, those intermediate routes underneath. Trips to the near side, but he's looking to the far side. And it's intercepted. Picked it. off by Kirkwood. That is Eric Phillips for the touchdown. He almost had a pick before that time he read it. Ford pick six by Eric Phillips. Looking for Penniman on the outside was a 23. And it's the field hung for a long time in the air in that short route. And Eric Phillips just reads it, and you can see it coming. He made a break on the ball on that route. Takes the pigskin out of the air. Another six on the board. And Kirkwood, the final nail in the coffin on that one. Six minutes left. 
after the interception and return by Eric Phillips. And now, no relation. Andrew by the extra point. It's right through there, 31 to 7. Yeah, Phillips again, watch the roll out here by McBee, trying to set his feet. Ball delivered a little bit late. And again, if you're going to throw that out to bring that receiver to the sideline, or that receiver's got to come back to the ball, pen him and stop. That allowed Phillips just to come underneath and take the pink skin of the curtain to come become a defensive back and keep the defense back from making the catch. So, again, four on the outside of the receiver. Ball's late. Ugly things happen. And Forno Sage cannot bear to pick six. Kirkwood fell to Staley in the title game of season. Tried to gather themselves up and get back to this state title game this season, which they did. And they did. And the one thing they learned from that Staley game, and they did it in that drive. When it could have turned for them right then and there, just like Staley did last year, the end of the third quarter through the fourth quarter, that nine minutes run, got it done. Hosick running the ball. I think Kirkwood learned their mess, learned it from that year, and they brought it here this year. Through Staley to get to the title game. In the playoffs, Valifi shaking tacklers like he's done all night. It's getting a little chippy now out in the field. And now it's tee off time for this defense. Played good first half. They did a really nice job of stopping the run tonight. It's less than 100 yards in the running game tonight. Bottled up Stephen McBee except for just that one run. A little bit of a run, but overall, you're right, under 100 yards. That's a win for Kirkwood defense. McBee behind Mosby. Looking in again, talking with his receiver. They've not been comfortable all night here in terms of where the ball has to be, where the receivers are going to be. Been out of sync. Happen. You fall behind me on a game like this, and with the speed that Kirkwood has up front, I mean, you just don't want to become one-dimensional, which makes it a nightmare. Well, and hand it to the secondary yep. for Kirkwood tonight. Yeah, they have. They've played well. They've done a nice job back there. He has his receiver, Mosby, this time. Harris was right there on the stop. And that is close to a first down, but it... And just think about a couple of those big plays. If they take place, it's a whole different game. And in a game like this where it's so talented, Neil, it's so many things. That's why it always may be some turnovers, special teams. And McBee hooks up with Penniman for the first down. Harris in the... Penniman makes the catch that time now. Now the ball's delivered where it needs to be. And those out routes, and believe me, in high school, hey, off enough yeah. with these guys. So these high school kids are throwing, I mean, it's tough for them. So my hat's off to them. They're competing out there, but you don't have on everything, so... Stephen McBee looking over the middle. Has his receiver. Go. It's caught by Winters. The turf after picking up the first down by J.J. Jones. J.J. planting some people. J.J. wants his name. No. Well, it might have been Benson. I thought it was Jones. It was Jones coming across. It. How about that open field tag to the ground? How about Stephen McBee waiting for his receiver coming across the field? He makes eye contact. Delivers the ball on the money. You're going to catch. You're going to get. Cards on that hookup. Had the time to do it. Blitz. McBee oh. is sacked. Back at the 46-yard line. Chip. Mr. Jones. Jones is back there. Hello, Mr. Jones. Jones. The strong safety blitzing off the air. Coming from the other side. You can feel the footsteps all the way up here. Got to get rid of the ball. And they had Not him surrounded chance. up the gut. Jamal Hall coming. Loss of eight on the play. Second down and four. McBee, Behind the incomplete, for intended for Penniman, Penniman, and in the coverage, Blake Goddard. The end, but, you know, hasn't had all the support either during the game, Neil. And again, they, again, the Kirkwood, nice job, of course, to score the game, but overall, taking the running game away from Kirkwood, I mean from Fort Osage. Fort Osage came out to some in the beginning of the third quarter when they got, they got away from it. On third and 19, McBee escapes out of the pocket. Wow, look at that. Trying to get. He goes to the 43-yard line of Kirkwood. 
Well, that McBeat will just not give up. Again, we go back and talk about what a fine human being he is, and young man, number one in his player of the year in the conference offensive the last two years for this team, and his coach goes on and on about him. He says he's the class of having for three years. This has been a special season for him to make the title game. And believe me, the one comment that after this play got stripped just as he threw it, got sacked. The heat was on again by... But he's been the most consistent player he's ever coached. You saw that tonight, Neil, from the get-go on the money. There, that time, he had to pull it back. There's the sack that took Leachman. place. And Leachman, has he been all over the place here in the second half? And it's been a mirage with him up front. He's taking some hits tonight. You put together the coverage in the secondary, and don't forget about those guys up front. We're yep. solid here. And how about this guy? Some big runs here in the second half, too. Alton, he made a couple nice runs, extended some drives there on that one score when it went May 24 to 7. So, I mean, when they had to make some plays, they got it done. They won the wasn't always pretty, but they made enough plays. But again, when you get those big scoring drives like that, Neil, now you can dictate the flow of the game. Then you come back for Fort Osage. And again, because you're not extending drives, you know, somewhere along the line, they kept breaking down somewhere offensively. You keep giving the ball back to your opponent. You begin to worry. And I think that's what happened to Fort Osage in the first half. Didn't have enough here in the second half to finish. Jared Bishop. And Gerard Bishop. Second down, he goes for six. Third down and eight upcoming at the Fort Osage. This year will be back next year. Third and eight in the final year. Losing Stephen McBee, of course, at your quarterback position. Who's going to fill that spot? Always the most important, the leadership. Stephen McBee tried to do everything he could tonight. Fort Osage moving the pocket, allowing them to see down the field, giving them the clear sight lines. Alton tackled by Tumasavi. Tumasavi. Joseph. Jonah Tumasavi. No, Jonah. Joseph up there. There's Joseph up there. Joseph Tumasavi. Then on the tackle. Timeout. Osage calls timeout with 2.02 left. Fought hard. Had a great year. Staley in the playoff run. Then, of course, the win last week against Ozark. Made a nice adjustments in the second half. Stephen Well by Ify, played well. But then again tonight, you're playing against Kirkwood, who was driven and committed to a victory this year. So, we have another day of action tomorrow. Baldy's going to go <laughs> home, get a little sleep. No, and we're, we're back at it tomorrow. Are you going to have a We might somewhere? just stay you? underneath this. Are you going to throw a, a setup somewhere? We start out with an Elias Catholic from Jeff City at the 11 a.m. game and then go right on through the Class 2 game and then finish it up with Class 6 Francis Howell from St. Louis and Blue City area. Francis Howell last year lost to Blue This year Blue Springs came over already, took care of business against the Smet, look for a great game next tomorrow. Tremendous running backs again. Hey. Coming out of there is Sia. Yard line. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away. Like you said, Baldy getting out with 151 left. Believe me, you know what? He, you always say to walk away, and you know, Neil, you always say to walk away, and, and, and I am not excusing the taking plays, but believe me, I've been in the gone through things like this, and it's so, hard to walk away. That's what I was going to ask it's you. It's tough. Did you always walk away? Well, I might have walked away and took some things. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, I like the way both teams have competed tonight. You know, Fort Osage came out here in the second. There are some things. Coach Sharks got his team back on track. But, again, you're playing against Kirkwood with a quarterback like Jordan Bishop. Going up top to Penniman. I mean, the speed on the you know, oh. Phillips. Out there in the coverage that time was Harris. I mean, yep. he's a 4-5 guy. They have done outstanding work here tonight. Yeah, they have. Defensively, and again, in the first half, just really couldn't get in the rhythm, couldn't get things going, couldn't get that running game going established. And again, you see, at any level, you can't be one-dimensional. you got to be able to do a lot of things. And 
Again, without Stephen B running the ball, there's your difference. The tackler gets it out in the flat. And that one's caught there by Jesse McBee. He's out to the 40-yard line. That'll bring up a... Not all these games. Doesn't it always come down just to a few plays? Defensively, offensively, special teams. You can count it on one hand. You know, a penalty here, a penalty there, and a drive. It extends the drive. Opponent. Kirkwood took advantage right there in the end of the third quarter. McBee tries to dump a pass over the top. And it's incomplete and will bring up fourth down. Jared Bishop, number four, the linebacker. I'll tell you what, he, I don't know how many tackles he has, but he's been everywhere on the field. Hey, that guy lays it out. And he hustles, sideline to sideline, giving it all. And hey, my hat's off to Kirkwood. They got it got off the mat, and they made a drive. And we keep calling, we've called him Jared, Gerard. I think it's Gerard. Gerard, excuse but, me. But, well, believe me, I've done it. He's a bishop that can play. That's what we know. And his brother Jordan can play as well, the twin brothers. That one's caught by Mosby for a first down. Yeah, I'll tell you what, those two bishops definitely tonight. The <laughs> four no saves. Got it done. And again, I made my hats off to Kirkwood. They came back through the Staley, go through a tremendous season, talked about some of the wins they had to get here this year, got it done. This team was tripped. McBee, that one is behind the receiver Dotson, Dante Dotson with 51 seconds left. Well, this Kirkwood team, coached by Matt Irvin in his third season, coach, after coaching at New Trier High School in Illinois, class 8A. And he came over, comes back, went to St. Charles West High School, not too far away. And he has ready to hold the trophy up here in the dome, and that was intercepted by Harris. And they like hitting on the receiver, Penniman, squeezing the field so you don't have a chance to come back. Ball a little underthrown. Harris comes away with the interception. Harris headed to the University of Iowa. And how about that picture right there? Coach so Sharks. Well, you know that's one at. Yeah, as he said, he's no the question about that. Most consistent player he's ever coached. And he gave him a compliment that you know, most players never get from the coaches, but. And that's tough when you know you're not going to be walk away from your life. You know? Maybe he's not going to walk away forever, but he's not yeah. going to be on the field for you. And you know what it means from a leadership position in the field. He's not there for you. Tough for any coach. Be an emotional moment for Coach Sharks. And left his mark. Did, but this night will belong to Kirkwood as they Nine go eight. into victory formation. And Coach Irvin is going to say bye to some of his seniors, too. We talked about. And also guys up front like Matt Berry and Taylor. Tufani, Tufan, Tufin, so Antonio Leachman, what a game he had tonight. Some of those seniors. Andre Harris. Matthew and the Kirkwood faithful counting this Great one down crowd. on the far sideline. Big oh, win for the Kirkwood. Great support for both teams. Champions, Show Me Ball 2012. We got it done, Neil. 2012 Class 5 State Champion. First ever championship for the Pioneers. You think they'll ever forget this moment in their life? Never. No way. Come back for the second year after losing to Staley last season. They get it done, run the table, get in here to the state title game, and perform beautifully it's in the dome before their hometown faithful. And they win it 31 to 7. And Fordo Sage team that finishes 12 and 2 on the year. And we are led by a tremendous quarterback in Stephen McBee, who really threw the football. And he did, he came out, did what he had to do. I like the way the calls were played, were made today by Fordo Sage. Just couldn't get it done, but Jordan Bishop, the Bishop brothers, also all running the football, just enough guys making plays, and they got it done. Biggest win in Kirkwood history. You'd have to call it that, they've been before, and they are enjoying it right now at the Dome. Great support from the fans. Hey, Kirkwood, you know, right there at the end, Neil, it could have fallen apart for him. 
They went a couple out, couldn't get things done. You saw the momentum changing on this. But again, they found a way to get it done. On that drive, costly penalty points on the board, and pretty much ended the game. Let's go down to Corey. Hey guys, I'm down on the field with Kirkwood quarterback Jordan Bishop. Jordan, first, congratulations on a great game to bring home this trophy to Kirkwood, their first football title ever. It means a lot. Um, we are uh, was a, to make our to make our senior year a legacy, and we did that. So, congrats to this whole team and the organization. Memories from this day. How special is it that one of the touchdowns you threw today was to your brother? It's amazing. Um, we connected uh, last week in the semifinals, so. Everybody hype when we connect with each other, so it's just good to be able to do in the state game for the second year in a row. You ran the offense extremely well today. What was going? What was going? Just a great week of practice, I think, and it helped us prepare for today. And uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to do what uh, do what we did without our front lines and for everybody else on this team. So props to the, the uh, front five. All right. Well, congratulations and enjoy the rest of your night, guys. That was Jordan Bishop back upstairs. He has to give those props to the, you love that when you see the quarterback giving the props to the offensive line, don't no, you? No, he understands, and he, you know, just the attitude of the young man, and he got it done, had to make some play. Team support, it takes everybody there up front. Big Ugly's got to do it, wide receivers got to do it, running backs got to do it. Jordan Bishop taking care of the football. They only had the one turnover, one of the keys. They did it, they also contained Steven. And I thought with no running game, Florida Stage didn't stand a chance, and they didn't, lost a tough game today. Three touchdown passes for Jordan Bishop. And boy, the emotion of winning your state title with your guys. Line it up, line it up. A lot of tough battles. Talked about some of the That's wins they had. Richie right there. Yeah. He caught a touchdown pass. Against, I mean, so many of their games this year came down to the second, final seconds. They had to come back against so many people, found a way to get it done. And I just think it started with that quarterback. Like the way he threw the ball, much better job in terms of protecting it. But again, remember, Bright Future's yeah, going to go play somewhere, probably him. No, we know this. The Bishops will probably go together. They probably will. Brothers. And if you want to checkmate your opponent, bring both of those Bishops with you. You got one on the offensive and the defensive side. side. And there's Coach Irvin. Kirkwood a title in his third season here. What a feeling for a as a coach. Well, we saw a lot of it. in Hazelwood East and what he went through, the emotions, you know, and a Super Bowl guy, but yet still talks about that championship. means for all these young guys, young men, they're going to go on, maybe not going to play football, going to do a lot of other things in life, but as I said, you'll remember this moment forever. Kirkwood holds the trophy high. The Class 5 state champions in Missouri. They win it tonight and recap it right after this. Hey, great party. Oh, Thamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practical. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a hamburger. Like, oh, you, you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So, sportsmanship, it's up to you. Welcome back to the Dome here in St. Louis. Kirkwood wins the championship here tonight, 31 to seven over Fort Osage, their first state championship ever, and their fans are- I've ever seen this, fans like this, singing in the stands and everything. They understand the emotion. They understand what these players have done for them. This is the support that they have in their community. Off to both coaches, great season for both teams. Hate to see one team lose, but that's what happens in championship games. Final stats brought to you by the Bomber. Kirkwood really dominated this game in almost all phases. Yeah, 30 yards in rushing. That's the difference right there for Fort Osage. Could never get the going, balanced it out. They really despised him well with Jared Bishop at the linebacker position. 
Look at the first downs, total yards, close. But again, you look at a couple key plays. Oh, allowed the drive to extend. That was the difference, one of the differences. In the we game. crowned four state champions today. Stanbury won the eight man. Perry in class one and Kirkwood, the capper in class five tonight. Great job by our crew led by Jeff Graham and D. You have more 12 hours. hours. We'll see you. We'll see you. <laughs> 12 hours. We'll get we'll some that. sleep, man. For Rich <laughs> Baldinger, this is Neil Hart tomorrow right here in the dome. Good night, everybody. everybody. Yes, let's good night the satellite. I'll be right back, Jeff. Call back. Okay. Oh, God. Alright. Here we go. Oh, speed up the clock. Good night satellite, but not good night Aja Kipro. Can we wait until tomorrow? I, I think you get your wish if you can. There's my son calling me at 10 after 11 at night. Dad, I need money. those pictures. Hmm. You know how much we need to pay Misha to get the coaches before they go in the media room. <laughs> I mean, we could be done with them so fast. You guys still with us in the truck? It's now late night. <laughs> we were hoping. All right. We were hoping maybe everybody just decided to go home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy. Yeah. He has nothing important to say. He's 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 very busy. Very busy, like all of you. <laughs> Say, I'd like a Twinkie, but I understand they're getting increasingly harder to come by. But little chocolate donuts. Is it Dean? Yeah, Dean. Yeah, for Helen, but we're on the hunt for little chocolate donuts. We're apparently on the hunt for little chocolate donuts. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that 11 o'clock game is going to come early tomorrow. <laughs> Significantly cutting into my happy time. <laughs>
back out to the field. Make sure the mic returns to the field. It will until I'm there. Stash the flag. We will also apparently stash the microphone flag. Bring the flag back to the truck. Will do. Anything for audio. You want That's the camera making that? Like an air return or something. Did you want butter or no butter? <laughs> Can I get a scone? Quite specific. Why a spoon, cousin? Because it's dull and it'll hurt more. So who was at the Sci-Fi Channel the last couple of days? Was that the James Bond Marathon? Like, oh. It's like every, I, there's, there's several I've missed. I find. Honestly, if they didn't have Sean Connery in them, you really haven't missed out on much. Lame. I mean, I thought Pierce Brosnan was okay, but if you're old enough to remember Remington Steel, then yeah. it's kind of a stretch for him to be James Bond. Yeah. It's like, didn't you get bossed around by a woman in the late 80s? <laughs> now you're just pig. Really? Really? 007? License to kill? Hmm? Right. Yeah, there was one on uh, last night, Goldeneye. I had never yeah, seen that. Yeah, that's a Pierce Brosnan. That was his first. Yeah, I had never All right. seen that one. I see heads bobbing. See, maybe we've got action in the bullpen. Did you start a timer? Uh, they do across the hall. All right. They're doing a press conference. Ten minute press conference stopwatch, but the only problem is this is the first time a St. Louis team has won today. So I'm sure not even close to wanting to be done with Matt Irvin. You are not the Lone Ranger. Don't go to town. The bandits will beat the snot out of you, man. I think that... Yeah, we're here with Matt Irvin, Chip in the school history. Your thoughts. Talk about your seniors. Yada, yada, yada. Would you care to donate anything to the drunk, the truck bar tab? Today? They are always willing to take donations. I'm just hoping my car has 9.30, 10 o'clock this morning. Here's hoping. I parked it in a pay lot. It said $5 max for the day. I thought I found the best deal. Balls in here. I'm thinking about picking up a Sharpie and signing my name to one. Do you think they'd notice? Who, who autographed this ball? The sideline reporter. I may need a five hour energy for game three tomorrow. Is my phone silenced? Yes, it is. Other than the day in Columbia for the basketball championships or not. More games, but they go. Yes, I did. Yep, I said we would be canning it now and using it at some point in time tomorrow. Now, one of the other guys has gone out in the hallway and has camped out, making sure he doesn't try to run past us. Um, and I believe he's coming here now. Yes, no, St. Louis media doesn't get him first. We do. Here we go. Oh, hey, Coach. Oh, wait. Apologize. Oh, hey. <laughs> you got nothing to worry about tonight. Sit down. We'll just a uh, couple of... 
quick and easy ones okay. about the game a little bit in the championship. Oh, you, you guys, my son, my oh go right ahead. No, you're fine. <laughs> We're good. Uh, you tell me when and we'll get going here. We're here with Kirkwood Pioneer head coach Matt Irvin and Matt Ford's on the win. Let's first start by talking about a state championship for a team that's never got one. What does this mean to your Kirkwood? Well, we're a little bit unique in that we were one school in one town. So I think it goes beyond the school community into our, our entire uh, Kirkwood you know, city. There's going to be, I think tomorrow's going to be a little crazy around there. And I think even school Monday will be a little, a little chaotic as well. But I think it, you know, there's a lot of deep roots. It's 114th year of Kirkwood football. And I think you know, we felt that support. Uh, we're very glad and very grateful for the opportunity to deliver it to our community and to our school. What do you think expectations are going to be like at Kirkwood for three years and already you bring home a trophy? What does that mean for you guys going forward? Well, I'll worry about that tomorrow. I'm going to enjoy tonight a little longer. But, you know, we're certainly, you know, I want to be at a place, and I think all our, you know, our expectations are high, and we've got great support at our school and our administration, and I think, uh, you know, great coaches and great kids, so I'm very fortunate. Let's talk about your kids. Tell me a performance that they put on tonight here in the Dome. Well, it's really a culmination of, of, of many years of work for them, and, and as is certainly with Fort Osage, it's really a great capstone to a really good career. Many of those players are three-year starters and been you know, varsity players for many years and, and accomplished varsity. It's a lot to them to, to kind of finish together and uh, to really complete a task they had put before themselves uh, some time ago. Talk about the performance of your senior chip. Put on a heck of a show, three big touchdowns. Well, yeah, I think so. And I think he would go back and say there's some plays he didn't make. And that's just kind of how he is. And just he's very tough on himself. And he's patient for himself, as we mentioned earlier. And I think, uh, you know, good quarterbacks can do that. They can have a throw they miss. They can have a series where they're a little bit off rhythm and then come back and then, and then play better as the game uh, advances. He's the right kind of player and right kind of person you want as a leader of your team and as a quarterback. Talk about your defense. They did a tremendous job against a Ford Osage offense that has really been able to marry accomplished quarterback. But your guys on the defensive side of the ball really stepped up tonight. Well, I think, you know, our, our, our defensive backs did a great job being able to play. And I think uh, our coach, uh, defensive staff, Coach Heidi and Mike Brown and Willie Parks and, and uh, Greg Wayne did a great job coaching the kids, getting them ready. And then I would say thirdly, I think, uh, you know, our, our defense line really played relentlessly tonight. And I thought they had a real on offense. And I think uh, you know, we were very fortunate. They had some plays they probably wish they could get back. But I'm, I'm very grateful for the work our kids did in the week, and it paid off tonight. Coach, congratulate first of many state titles at Kirkwood. Thank you so much. Many thanks. Appreciate it. We're, we clear? Yep. Enjoy tomorrow. Hey. You enjoy. I think you're going to have a long night and a long tomorrow, so enjoy it. <laughs>